36, he is handshaking with the mechanics. Oh, for sure. With the rush, with the impact. Everything every, yes. flows perfectly, right? Flows perfectly from tool to tool, whether it be his Jinrai kicks, whether it be his fireball game as well. Just an overall incredible character who, once you get put in the corner against him, it feels like you are fighting for your life. Yeah, and boy, can that come easy because of the side switch combos and all the tools that they have to play with space. All right, we are beginning the top eight side as Kim just jumps in and gets a raw combo, right, to start things off. That's 10 hits and corner carry. The loop situation is engaged. Yeah, immediately into the empty jump throw. And now Uriel's back is up against the ropes here. There's the punish counter. Going to squeeze out some damage here. Ooh, mm. Whoa, that throw was from so far away. <laughs> looked like uh, Lou actually stuck out a button there that got thrown on recovery. That was pretty fortunate for Uriel because things were going really, really south really fast. Now back into neutral. Uriel is at the live deficit, but pressuring here with the sequences. Just trying to loop and keep things safe, but no. Finds an opportunity. Lugabo takes the round after things were starting to change a little bit. But as far as the, the offensive pressure, a raw jump in combo at the start, you couldn't have anything better. And we get a second one off the teleport. I know. I really love just how aggressive we are being at round start. Really explosive options coming out from Lugabo. Yeah. But now Uriel starting to slow things down a little bit here, trying to take control of the pace of the match by utilizing this drive rush. The Dragon Lash is paying off early, so well done, Uriel, getting that started. That's an important part of the Kin Toolkit in the back. Yes, punish counter combo. Nice done, Uriel, setting things up, piecing it apart, getting the rounds. So now we're tied. Yeah, I love how we're utilizing the command run, stopping short, really, like to keep yes. Lugabo on their toes. They gave him the command run, bro. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's such a thing that he, he would keep from 3 5 5. Well done. Lugabo gets a jump in combo, confirms into the level three. It means we're going to get our. Our damage, our, our speed up a little bit, so the buff is engaged. I would say we're favoring Gabo here, but ugh, big meter on deck for Uriel. Yeah, still, yeah, that three bars is absolutely devastating, right? But you have to look at the drive gauge, too. Uriel sitting on about half of a drive bar remaining, starting to throw some fireballs mm. to build up time, but it's not going to matter here. Yeah. One more mix, could decide it. Tries to go for the parry, and there we go. The pickup off of the trade combo. Gabo taking game number one. Well, Kimberly is a character that you don't often see in top eights. Of course, we have one qualified for World Warrior, which is exciting. But um, another character that a lot of people started to doubt after you know, some initial uh, nerfs, excuse me, coming from the beta. So cool to see Kimberly players digging deep and, and finding success with the character. On the other end of this now, Ariel starts off with a little bit more success. We're not letting Kim run away with it at the start. And the driver's combo is going to push us all the way to the corner. Yeah, that was a good option to go for parry there. Unfortunately, with the whiff throw means that you're going to get tossed with a punish counter. So a lot of extra damage in there, taking away some of that drive gauge that too. And now we're starting to really slow things Ooh. down. Uriel recognizes, I have such a high life lead, I don't need to overextend at all. Yeah, and... Uh, Lou's kind of just playing that game, though, and finds a bait opportunity to push in big damage on Uriel. Now we have the corner set up. Oh, we get left. cannot let them jump out there. That's crucial. Yeah, no, and not only did he let him jump out, Uriel smartly going for the throw also just to avoid the explosion from the paint can altogether. Spends the rest of that drive gauge to make sure we can capitalize and close up the round. Okay, okay. So now we have a lead situation for Uriel. We're good on meter. We need to translate this into a game so we can tie things up 1-1. Okay, no check on the DI, but we don't get punished either. So we kind of come out unscathed. Again, just drive rushing on in, throwing out that green stuff to close the distance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. There's a green dash for you. The uh, the drive rush into jab is just a crucial mechanic in the Street Fighter 6 meta. You have to be mastering it. Back into neutral here, we trade with the sweep. Okay. Oh, sliding on in, I like that actually to stop Ken's forward momentum. Agreed. Oh, but you got to be careful about the spacing on that or you are going to get blown up. One mistake, tries really? to go for level three, doesn't hit. We were able to parry it. You are dead here. That's a young man's move. That's a young man's move to let it rip in that situation. I don't know how I feel about it. Uriel definitely going to let him know how he feels about it with the fat punish. Some mm. life left on on Gabo's side. Yeah, and then Good able to get the throw out. there to tie things up 1-1. One, one. I was honestly expecting us to spend all of our drive gauge, right? Sure. As much as possible, just, you know, get the confirm into another drive rush uh, cancel. But instead, we just went for the level three and then close it out there with another hit. There's a big risk. I mean, if it hits, it pays off huge, right? You get the buff engaged. You save all those drive stocks. So massive chance to turn things around, but of course, Blocking it, you, you forfeit everything and, and Uriel sees at the moment. Oh, that was a dagger! Wow. Max distance, crouching medium kick, confirms it into the corner carry combo, and we get the overhead follow up. The whole situation paying off massive for Uriel. 
that, that's the kind of crouching medium kick that shakes you to your yeah. core when you try to throw yeah. out a footsies button like that standing heavy kick like that. Well said. But there we go. Drive impact not allowing you to get the tiger lash, the dragon lash kicks, excuse me, in for free. That was a cheeky reset. And now we're going to pepper in the level one. So a burnout situation coming up for Ariel. How are we going to defend this? Oh, crouching medium kick, of course. I'm actually curious why we stopped short. Was it the fear of a reversal there? I mean, it had to be, but also going for a reversal with that little drive gauge left would have been super risky for Yuri. Nice perfect parry. It's the first time we're seeing this come into play in the set. Another big part of Street Fighter 6, of course, is how you tune into your opponent's button presses and get those perfect parries worked in. It's going to start sewing. Some dissonance in the head of your oh. opponents as Ariel gets one of their own on the safe jump. Yeah, and there's that side swap combo you were talking about before the match started. Wow! Crossing under both sides. That was so tricky. I don't even think nice. that <laughs> that Lugavo knew which side nah, that was going to hit. Didn't need to. You're definitely right. Didn't know, didn't need to. Choosing the combo into the level two. So this is an economic decision. We don't get the level three. The buff is not engaged, but we do save a bar. And that's Kimberly's reversal game is with her with her supers. So we put yep. one in the pocket. Let's see if that pays off. Also important to close things out because you were in burnout, right? And sure. if you allowed Ken to stay alive with level three, that could have been really devastating. Oh, man. Oh, it just keeps going. Man, kick him in the head. Big combo coming in. Now Lou is in trouble. Back against the wall. Maybe 35, 40% life at most left at this point. Ooh, oh, now we're in the yellow. How, why does that hit? I don't know, man. It's a crazy button. <laughs> she was underneath it. <laughs> crazy button. It's really, really a special button in a game with a lot of special buttons. And Kim players, of course, they know that that's their closer. So they're going to be looking for opportunities to punch you in the face. And on block, you know, they're going to be plus with the driver's cancel. Lou's going to take a second here, think about it, Bro. listen to the character slay theme a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Ken may be homeless, but he ain't hungry, okay? Let me tell you. Nah, he eating. He is full. He's eating the whole table. Actually, no, we cap on, on Ken a lot because of his power level, right? And, of course, anytime a Shoto is really strong in Street Fighter, they're going to attract that hate, oh, sure. whether it's Ken, Lou, Ryu, Akuma, whatever. Uh, but I like the design of it. It's a, okay, nice. We get a perfect parry to start game four. That's a massive punish, pushing Earl on, all the way into the corner, and then we get the low confirm. Things are turning up for Gabo in a moment's notice. Yeah, it's a strategy of just trying to be as active as possible to pedal to the metal to make sure you can overrun your opponent. Now, there we go. Takes a step back for some footsies with the punish counter and answers back with a perfect of his That's own. Beautiful. That's beautiful, baby. We love to see it. We take a second. We go to character select. We breathe. We know that we're down two and one, but we are not out. We start the first round off with a perfect. Now on the other end of this, in the second round, Ariel fighting back with a massive drop that is so rare. When does a Kim player ever actually drop those? I mean, Lugaba has to capitalize on this situation though, right? There we go. Checking with the standing light punch. Who? That's what I say. Yes. Oh, my challenge? Are you kidding me? <laughs> the double trade. They are pressing out here, but there comes the drive impact blowing up that button press there from Uriel. And we do have level three on deck. We are absolutely going to spend it. That's a dangerous situation because you are in that yellow life. So even with the scaling, it should be enough. Nicely done. Ties things up two to two with an incredible response in game four over game three as it looked like Uriel was starting to walk away with this. Yeah, the adaptations between both of them has really been incredible to see, right? Now we're going back to the character select once again. Take a little bit of a break. Whoa, hold on. Whoa. The shades are coming off. He changed shades first. There we Whoa, go. What? Yeah, oh, now up. we're going back to party shades. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Party shades engaged. He said, hold on. These are the shades I won with, all right? Does he just carry a whole bag of shades that he switches anytime he loses? Says, no, nah, this isn't good. That's sick. That's a great gimmick. I'm not sure if that's what the vibe is, but regardless, from where I'm sitting, it's, it's swag. So, as it done, Ariel, getting back in the zone. How are we going to close this out? I mean, gotta be honest, Lou's looking really strong. And with just a raw teleport counter hit opener, that's exactly what we're gonna need to get this thing going. I got blown up trying to go for that reversal throw attempt. Now your back is up against the ropes again. The drive rush for the meaty low is so smart. Get those extra plus frames on that. What a presence of mind situation to get underneath and side switch again. But unfortunately, we're not able to convert on the other side. Doesn't matter. Lou finds the second hit opportunity. We're gonna spin that bar. Yes, we do. Brilliant decision. That's an old man decision. We see young man decision. We see veteran decision. I like the way that Lou is playing right He's now. aging mid set. Yes. All right. Up around. This is set point in our first match of top eight winner side. How is Ariel going to respond? What a call out. Yeah, very smart there to go for the EX slide. Again, utilizing that target combo. Tries to re actually had time to refill the paint can there and it still gets a perfect parry. That's beautiful. 
Blue's playing really well. I'm loving this. Oh, we get the setup. So that's a throw. That's a throw counter with the punish counter. So big damage. The follow-up combo is good. We should be able to combo into level two again. Yeah, I think you're dead here. He's cooked, brother. It's not a perfect, but it's close. Well done. Blue taking game five, moving ahead, three, two, and winner side. Yeah, great, just great adaptations there from Lugabo, right? Really able to bring things back after what felt like a devastating first game from Uriel. Yes. Just really overrunning him, especially ending that one round round with a perfect, mm -hmm. right? To get a point yeah, on baby. the board, and then answering back with a perfect of your own, saying, hold up, I'm not going to be shook. It doesn't matter how young I am, all yes. right? Perfect. Nicely done, especially with a character like Kimberly. What I really loved about the second round of game five was all the other times we we saw the offense from kimberly start the round i'm going to close in on you i'm going to find the hit whether it's a jump in or a hard re or something then they backed off they backed off gave ken space and you know when a ken player just wants to say i'm over this i want to get it started it's od hadoken and i'm going in right behind it mm -hmm. such a great call out to go for the ex slide paying attention, knowing that the Kim player is going to want that and got the party started in a completely different way. So, well done. Uh, uh, just great um, checking a lot with that standing medium kick, too. Constantly. Which is a treat in yeah. Street Fighter Six. A, a, a cancelable standing medium kick yeah. is rare. Very good. And a lot of it, too, was just like whiffing standing light punch immediately into standing medium kick when Ken That's was good. backed up. The, the spacing was absolutely on point, and that really carried Lugabo through those later rounds. But, but, okay, we've seen this happen in the Wednesday night TNS tournaments plenty of times when Uriel gets into the losers, especially in a top eight situation, mm -hmm. becomes a terror. So that's going to be everybody's nightmare to deal with on the lower <laughs> side of the bracket now. But I'm, you know, we're going to see more of them later. Um, I love Uriel. But as far as Ken players go, very explosive. We saw like the personality that they displayed in the camera. You feel that also when they play the character as well. So uh, really enjoyable. We're going to see what we get from our other side of yeah. top eight winners. Up next here, we're going to have Jazz Daryl up against Liquid O. So it should be Liquid O. I want to. I want to. Liquid Ocelot. <laughs> that's a hard name. <laughs> that's, that's a good, that's a good question goats. to ask. All right. All right. Yeah, I don't know, and I also, unfortunately, I don't know who they're representing today. Uh, but Jazdero, of course, also someone we see in TNS all the time. Someone who beat me in TNS before. Uh, gonna be seeing the JP out of them. Um, you know, it's just a great character. JP obviously is. Oh, I mean, it's in that conversation with everybody of top three. There's nothing that's missing from JP. He's in a couple conversations, right? Yeah. A couple conversations, whether about he's the top most hated character in the game. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of different things, but it's undeniable that JP is a very strong character, especially in these tournament scenarios, right? When you only have that that first to three set. Yep. And it, it's sometimes it's so hard to adapt against, it's especially a with the JP. Yeah, he's a tilter. He is a tilter. He is. When you get sent full screen and he's dealing so much damage to you from that far away. Hold up. Oh. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. I thought we were going to see some. Uh, Let's go. I mean, still. Yeah. I, for a second, I thought it was Zangi, but it's going to be Dalton, which is just Come as on. exciting. This, this is weird. This is actually a weird matchup. Dalton yeah. versus JP. There's, there's so much to unpack here because they both represent a similar archetype on paper. Yeah, They're the supposed zone. to be the zoner. But the, the interesting thing here is in this game, I feel like almost like the optimal Dalsim play is to go for like a heavy mix-up style where yeah. you're teleporting in on them. And that teleport alone is going to be an yes. incredible tool to allow him to get in on JP. Very well said. It's a very exclusive tool for yep. Dalsim in this game. Nobody else can take that decision and just teleport across the screen, right? And you're right about the offense also. We saw that a lot in their Street Fighter V development. It was a character that they put a lot of offense potential in to the kit. We have that in Street Fighter VI as well. So how are we going to navigate this situation if we're Liquid O? We have to, of course, represent the zone. We have to be able to pepper in our buttons in the mid-range distance. But Jazz Zero is going to have a clock ticking in their head, knowing that eventually that teleport is going to come. Yeah, you're seeing that Jazz has already not used a single spike or set of a portal. Finally does, right? right. After knocking Dolls on full screen. But even then, you have to be careful because all Dolls has to Ooh. do is block one spike, dash in, and he's already in range from that one dash to start getting buttons started. Yeah, but so far, I think the spacing has been nice from Jazz. That was a crucial interrupt. Well done from Liquid sniping out that, that OD departure. Ooh, we almost get a, a throw percent. Yeah. You gotta be careful with that floaty jump though, right? Keeping you in the air like that means that Jazz is gonna be able to immediately set up those spikes or even set up teleports. Yeah. But I like the way Jazz is playing so far. Super non-committal until they have the ball rolling. The Liquid also playing very non-committal, just trying to honestly get back into this match. Hasn't ripped any options like Super Raw yet. Oh, but now getting caught with some button presses full screen. 
Gotta be careful, man. Nobody punishes that, that business better than JP. Yeah, and I mean, we haven't even seen any teleports yet from Liquid either, right? Which I think maybe holding on to them, seeing if we can feel out Jazz's, um, the rhythm, right? The rhythm of the way that Jazz likes to set up spikes and likes to set up portals before we start going in for the teleport. Because if you teleport willy-nilly, you're going to be getting hit by those anti-airs. Right. Very well said. And getting reset in front of JP is not exactly the situation you want. <laughs> wow. Try to get the punish there from full, all the way out. Not able to convert. With all this pressure Liquid's been able to put in on the drive gauge of Jazdiro. I like what we're seeing. You see Jazz is now being forced to kind of brawl, play that infighting style with dolls of all characters. Ah, cannot trade with that. That's so scary. He's close. Jazz is close to burnout. He's in the yellow health margin. Nice peppering in from Liquid. We're just playing this so patient. He's trying to win this with buttons. I think that's a that's a really smart decision from Dalsum. That's something that's how you know that they have played Dalsum for a long time. Absolutely. I mean that's the optimal Dalsum game plan, right? Pepper your opponent with buttons until you just whittle them down. You want to talk about a tilting character, Dalsum is also one of those. Sure. I really like it when players play for position, just keep it really solid, non-committal. Well done from Liquid. Now we get the teleport, so we're, we're locking Jazz into the corner. A crucial DI from Jazz Zero. I think that's our first one of the set. It came at the right time. Absolutely, and is immediately going to cancel that into the level three. Get as much damage as you can here. This is bad. This is pretty rough. The situation is going from bad to worse. That was a crucial throw attack. But Jazz is still in a great position. Usually to go for the reversal. At least we blocked the overhead. Oh, no. Liquid is sitting on a critical art as well, but isn't going to get the opportunity to spend it. And Jazz is going to take game number one here in this zoner war. This he, is such an interesting matchup. Yeah, I think I think once either jails the other into the corner is when things start to get critical. We saw it from Liquid in the round that they won when they were able to push Jazz to the corner. And then there, that was our most dominant round so far. Jazz just had Dawson backed up in the corner, and there was nowhere he could go. So we got stick normals versus the stretchy limbs. So far, 1-0 stick. I feel like the crouching heavy punch has been such a good tool already for Liquid, right? Oh, yeah. Uh-oh, there we go, EX Amnesia. Okay, definitely putting the buttons in the right place. Yeah, I'm not sure how Dalsum actually deals with EX Amnesia. You know, thinking about that, that's going to be the difficult <laughs> yeah. part about moving in. <laughs> yeah. He's a, a hell of a drug, as they say. Oh, chooses the DI out. And although there is no punish, as Zero still finds on the other end of this an advantage. Yeah, and there's the teleport. Very nice. Jazz is in burnout, so this is the opportunity for Liquid to be more aggressive, but immediately gets swiped right back to full screen. That sucks, man. I feel like Liquid really was cooking with something there. We had we had the momentum. Gets away with him. Nice job from Jazz, at least staying clutch, even in a moment of crisis. Okay, we get the interruption and the follow-up, so we're peppering on a little bit of damage, and we're just moving Jazz back. I like the way we're playing this. It's just the unfortunate part is everything Dalton does knocks the opponent away, right? That's kind of the idea. But yeah. that's exactly where JP wants to be. True. Yeah. I mean, he's just faster on the gun versus Dalton. Everything that Dalton does is a little bit slower. Oh, but there nice. we go. Nice. Getting that short little combo. But the again, DI. the DIs from Jazz have been on point so far in this set. Another level three to even the score. Getting DI'd into holding a level three sucks sucks so bad. It's a punish counter. It's going to always pretty much settle up the drive meter game. Now Jazz Zero with a solid life lead here. Can't be too aggressive. That was a really smart teleport though, right? But yeah, you have to be careful for the EX Amnesia because Jazz is going to throw it out if you get too close. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Any button now though from Jazz could potentially kill Liquid. So just be careful and there oh, it is. What Doing a... his best Daigo impression. Well done. 2-0 lead JP over Dalsum right now. Look, Liquid, hear me out, bro. Hear me He's out. He's trying. Raw level three. <laughs> <laughs> hear me out. If this was Nareth from DNS, absolutely. Here's I it. actually, you know, I am actually kind of surprised we're not seeing the uh, the giant fireball super. Sure. That, that's a pretty good option to just kind of put out on the screen to force your way in, right? And force the situation to happen to where Jazz is the one who has to react. It's, it's harder to set up than like a Rashid Tornado, though, of course. Okay, we've been seeing that from players a lot in the Street Fighter 6 meta lately. Backdashing in the corner. Nicely done. So we get to throw Jazz Zero into the corner and we get things started. The DIs have been so clutch, though. And willing to actually go into burnout with that DI, just recognizing that when the fireball came out, that's it, right? You have yeah. to hold that. It's just like, come on, we're playing six, right? We've got to be ready for that. We have to have our options shored up so we can answer the DI situation. 
It's so unfortunate for Liquid because we had everything we wanted. We had JP in the corner. Now we're back in the neutral, and things are not terrible. JP's just now getting out of burnout, but we're a couple button presses again away for Liquid from dying. Yeah, absolutely. Anything will do it, but there's the drill. Drill still not plus enough, though, to actually get a, a positive minute. situation. But here's the throw. Yeah, and Jazz went back into burnout. Literally just got out of burnout. Nicely done. The roundhouse, very nice there from Liquid. Let's see if we can start to claw our way back in this matchup here. Yes. Yes, I want to see it. One more game from Dalsim. Nice to see. Staying out of the ranges. And we get to Annie Air. Okay, Liquid sharpening up. I like this. Playing solid neutral. But just as I say that, JP finds a perfect time. Drive rush in. Hit a button. We're going to spin the level three and try to get some of our drive stocks back. I do not hate this decision. Yeah, the unfortunate thing we're seeing a lot here with Liquid O is that he is dying a lot with full meter. Yeah. He's got three bars on deck, never really gets an opportunity to spend them at all. Tries to go for the drive impact there for a reversal. It is going to allow us to push our way out of the corner, but is it too little too late? Oh, brother. The over... Dude. Departure is also a crazy teleport. I mean, we're getting all the love to Dawson to start this match about teleports, but... <gasps> Okay, we had we had the situation, but I think all we could cancel it into was level one there. And now oh, we let the level three rip. But he just dashed forward into nothing, and now you are down to zero bars. That sucks. Set point. Yeah, that sucks. That was a that was a really risky decision from Liquid, who I think just kind of felt like they were on a clock at that point to try to make something happen. Now in the final round, potentially Jazdiro gets the crucial overhead combo. Wait a minute, the teleport finally cashes in again. Follow up situation is good. Oh, we're mixing. We're moving. Dalton He's freaking it. Mix up machine in oh, this yeah. game, bro. He's freaking it. JP gets out. We're still checking. Okay, we have a chance here. I like how act we're being. The amount of inputs per second coming out from there Lincoln. it is. And yet keep using that teleport. It is such a strong tool. Get the yoga fire as well. That puts Jazz into burnout. Yeah, please just do not get critical hearted. That's, that's really your number one goal at this point. There well timed go. button. That was <laughs> insane, bro. He yes. saw him disappear and immediately yes. had the air button pressed. All right, so situation, we are down 2-1. We whiffed the critical art and it didn't hit home. Those are all tilters. 100% Liquid could have given up in that situation. And we even saw JP get the overhead combo as he starts it off again. But I still like the fight that we're seeing from Liquid. It is not over for Dawson yet. The thing about Jazz, though, is he's so confident in the way that he's controlling his matchup. I mean, look at that perfect parry. He is willing to put himself into burnout on offense consistently here. Yes. Not too scared of what Liquid is bringing to the table. So Liquid needs to force that fear into him, force that respect. Sure. It's just hard because it's not really what Dawson does, right? It's, just, it's not a character who completely, from any range, just dominates their will. They have to set up the puzzle pieces. Everything has to work together and paint a picture. Nice. It starts with Annie here. Well done. Shutting off that avenue of advance. Make things uncomfortable for JP. Push him towards the, the corner. Oh, we finally get a punish on the DI. Yeah, but doesn't get a follow-up there after the standing heavy kick. Unfortunate. Still needs to keep him locked down in the corner, and he's doing just that. He's keeping these combos safe. I mean, again, I respect playing for the position and not overextending, but maybe just a cancel until a level one could have got it. Doesn't matter, we got there. That's the thing, is once you have JP's back up against the wall, Dalsum really can control that because JP can't walk out of range of his buttons, right? right. Dalsum is the one who decides what the range is. He got kind of a floaty jump, too. JP doesn't, you know, he kind of hangs in the air for a while, so it's a lot of reaction time for Dalsum to hit those anti air, so I'm glad that Liquid's not letting anything get by. Back into neutral, we check the dragon. Oh. Ah, so far away, too, okay. with the drive impact. Immediately sets up the level two. Gonna get the full confirm off of this. That hurts so bad, the double DI combo. Bro. Ouchies, yeah. Okay, again, we hit with the back dash, and we get the back throw. So this is another situation that Liquid had earlier in the match. Can we convert? Oh, into Beautiful. level three? No, goes into the level one. I actually like that. It means you can go for level two coming up soon if you want to. Yeah, that is so, so meaty, by the way. The, the breath on Wake Up. Liquid, you are in a beautiful spot. Let's not let's not mess this up, man. We just need one button press. Oh, he just, you know, just barely oh! gets out. Look at the hitbox on that, though. Again, closing out another game with the exact same button this time. In the air there. Take it to a game five. Yeah. Yeah, okay, but Jazz was getting so much out of those DIs. And finally, you go to the well at one time that you shouldn't have. You didn't have enough life to absorb the attack. So I think when Jazz is getting pressed, 
and and I don't I'm not disagreeing because the, the first DIs were so strong we're seeing now that it's a habit but we have exactly. to keep that in mind liquid that is crucial that we do not get hit with another punish counter drive impact in this last game yeah that is a huge thing here but I mean slowly but surely liquid has been learning the habits here of jazz has basically kind of shut down the full screen uh, set play yes. from JP altogether in that yes. last game good I mean, yeah, just just floats in the air, right? That's what you do. You just float in the air and say, no, I'm just not going to deal with this at all. Just the eyes are right at the start, man. No this fear. is what I said couldn't happen. And Jazz just gets away with another one. This time we get a counter DI. No punish counter, so it's not a crumple. Oh, we miss out on a huge teleport opportunity. Yeah. We just didn't get the button as we fell. And nice, the perfect parry there on the crouching heavy punch. There we go. We're going to burn the level one. Yes, I like it when Dawson players do this because it is hard for Dawson to spin the meter. So I like the comp. There's some liquid there. We get the follow-up punish counter opportunity. It's not enough. We do get the throw. So almost any situation here would kill for Jazz Dero. Oh, but Perfect Perry comes out. Gonna get sent full screen, but it doesn't matter. You've dealt with that. Oh, Chase is there. He didn't want to allow him to go into the float. Oh, come on, liquid. Oh, he's clutching it out. Jazz goes into the level two. So we're spinning all, and a hit here would be so monstrous. We can oh, actually dead. kill with this combo. No, we don't. It wakes no. up with the throw. Are you kidding me? Set point now for Liquid. Jazz what? just dropping the spaghetti all out of uh -huh. his pockets. That was sick. I like it. Well done. Well done from Liquid playing super clutch, but Jazz Zero not done. JP closing the distance. Tried to force the situation there with the Dragon Rush. Dragon Rush. <laughs> Go on, give me that well back. All right, teleport is in for Dawson. Another punish counter into the level one. So we tie things up on the life lead. A meter deficit on the drive gauge for Jazz. Goes ahead in a burnout. You've been saying earlier about how they're willing to put themselves in a burnout. Oh, yeah, but you have to be careful now because when you're in burnout, that's when Liquid is getting hyper aggressive here. No, oh, that's a classic. Jump back on the fireball. Look at him just hopping. He's hopping him down on one leg. This is scary. This is, I know. No lie, this is scary. Let's go. Dawson get the combo. 3 2, able to bring it back like that. Incredible from Liquido. That was scary. That was really scary. Liquido was down bad in a big way, but showed a lot of resilience, fought back in a tough matchup, and made it happen. The, the way that we kind of thought it would with the teleports in the long run. It's so interesting because, you know, bear with me here. It feels like if I have to. J <laughs> it feels like when JP fights Dalsum, that's the one matchup where he doesn't get to play his game plan. That's right? true. He has to actually have a conversation that's in true. neutral with Dalsum, and he can't just freely autopilot like a lot of JP players really can. You know, JP is simple. You knock them back, you start doing the set play, and yeah. then you try and get their habits of how they want to get in. That just doesn't work against Dalsum. Right. Very, very well said. It's a mini game that Dalsum pretty much makes everybody in the game play. It's that, that awkward, I could hit you with, I could set you up with a fireball from here, or I could press a button, and either way, you're going to get tapped. So uh, nicely done from from Dawson keeping the, the distance respectable from JP. Although I thought Jazz did great. I thought yeah, actually, oh sure. I thought, you know, I'm sure JP is supposed to win that matchup. So Jazz looked dominant in the first couple of games and just got away from him. As much as I you know, want to give credit to to Sim for overcoming, I still, you know, got to show some love to it. To, even to our top tier yeah, players. for sure. I mean, come I, on. I think the problem there mostly was a lot of putting himself into burnout, right? True. Putting himself into burnout a lot. And, you know, I feel, like, I feel like some of his EXs, you probably could have gone for some more EX um, amnesias because we didn't really see an answer from Sim for EX amnesia, right? Every time we didn't did that, right. he was able to steal the turn back or even get a big punish. You're right. So he never forced that answer out of him, and he only used it sparingly here and there, maybe three times the whole set. Burnout's crazy. It Burnout is, is one of the most complex uh, mechanics in Street Fighter VI, and I think is also the most exciting. It creates the most tense situations, and a lot of players approach it differently. Some people, like me, I'm trying to avoid it at all costs, and that, that's also a problem for me sometimes in the long run. Yeah. You're not spinning as efficiently, uh, but then some players just do it, like, almost it, immediately. I, I know there's a lot to be said. A lot of people have things that they want to say about the, the, the system mechanics of Street Fighter, right, when it comes to, you know, drive, rush, burnout, uh, perfect pairing, things like that. But I think the way that the system's currently meshed together uh, whether or not you have some criticisms of them, they they add to a lot of, you know, what, what's the what's the buzzword? Player expression. <laughs> it's fun. They just let you play We're very differently, right? Yeah. If you want to pick Marisa and spend a hundred drive gauge to just nuke someone's health bar, you can do it. 
or if you want to play more of a footsie style with her and utilize her armor with those gladius punches, you yes. can. And that's just such a fun thing about Street Fighter 6 is being able to play the characters in the way that you want to play them. You heard it first from my good friend Jobber. His favorite thing about Street Fighter 6 is Marisa's nukes. Anyways, shout out to chat. Love you guys. Thank you for hanging out. You're damn right. It's been a fantastic time. Yeah, not nah, we're not apologizing. You see the sponsors we got? Hey, yeah, yo. <laughs> This is a great tournament, by the way. Shout out to Maximoff and Gamma coming up next. Um, I do believe Gamma played JP last time I watched. Uh, Just Frame. Yep, DJ. JP locked in. DJ's also cracked, by the way. Just an amazing character in yes. Street Fighter 6. JP's, he's sick. D, I mean, and he deserves it. He really yeah. deserves it. After, after what he went through in the past. DJ <laughs> is wild. Yeah, let it out, fake scientist. The hypest character select theme in the business. <laughs> All right, we're getting into this. This is the loser side now of top Whoa, eight. Whoa, bro. Yeah, he baby. immediately went in. Yeah, get in. Get in there. Get in after. I mean, what do you want to do? You want to zone with JP? Absolutely not. Let's get in close. Let's make things uncomfortable. Nicely done. We're punishing the jump out arc, but then the jump back air throw. Most of the time, we forget JP even has that. Yeah, and Wow checks with the two standing light punches immediately into a reversal drive impact. Gets the side swap combo along with it. Yikes. Okay, these players are playing. They're playing good. Start off first round, just swinging at each other. Uh -oh. Breaks out the OD amnesia early. Who will we miss the jump back light kick? But immediately goes for the drive rush into the slide. I mean, DJ with the Dude. best drive rush in the business, right? Just going to constantly stay on top of you. Yeah, I mean, why not? This is this is the situation you don't want to be in. I mean, you're in burnout, so, oh, the, the JP anti airs are so strong. How many of us have been hit by that DJ light kick in that situation? Well done, piecing it together to win the round. Gamma goes up one round so far against DJ. Yeah, and that was a round where we saw that Maximoff really just came out swinging, yeah. right? Started off very strongly in his favor, but again, Gamma able to be patient, weather the storm, and push DJ out. Here we go, Maximoff now burning himself out <laughs> immediately. Oh my God. Yeah, Gamma is ready again on the, the jump light kick in here. So well done, that's a that's a huge thing. Are you, whoa, we just break the DI with the raw level two and we're on rhythm. So now Gamma is in a position where he could die. Yeah, he said, no, just hold this. It ain't your turn yet. I'm gonna blow up whatever option comes out there with the super. This is wild. This is wild. This is the most disrespectful play I've ever seen in Street Fighter 6 and I am loving it. I wanna see some more. Gamma finally answers, slows things down. We're gonna go right into the level three. Say, I want the drive meter advantage because you know Maximoff's gonna try to get up and start swinging immediately. You know, the thing is for a JP matchup, this is going so fast, but the pacing of it is yes. so incredibly quick. And that's because Maximoff is just forcing a lot of interaction back to back here. Yeah. And there we go, drive rushing on in, immediately hitting mm. him with the cane. Resend the uh, command throw again. So we got two command throws in this round. That means if you're a JP player, you should be eating. And he does. He advances 1-0 so far in the lead. But that was as quick as we've seen any games yeah. of Street Fighter 6 so far. And just as quick, they're right back in it, right, with that instant rematch now. And now you see Maximoff actually kind of slowing down a little bit, is what I would say, but he drive rushes right on in. <laughs> we finally get a jumping light kick. He blocked. Oh, <laughs> mama. The drop are confirmed, though. These guys are swinging. This is wild. Heavy Slasher gets punished by the Debarcher. Maximoff tries to close the distance again. Oh, we're not ready for the Anya. That is so tough. Okay, JP doesn't confirm, Ooh. but the follow-up situation is pretty good. Yeah, pretty safe. And there we go, closing it out with the spike. And that round was all Gamma, right? MJ completely dominated that, only taking a few stray hits. We'll see if we can keep that up. Okay, nice anti air again. So we're pretty much complete. We let the couple go through from JP, but the anti air situation has been super well represented. Now we get out of the corner, so JP with more space to breathe as Maximum just double dashes in neutral. Not even, not even a drive rush. We just double dash and close the distance. He's just so active, so hyperactive in all of his options, right? He does not stop moving at all. No, why? Why stop? It's Look at it. All <laughs> four. He just jumps forward. Okay, we blocked at the DI, and now suddenly JP's at risk for going into burnout. Air to air. Yeah, tries to go for the throw, but there's the OD amnesia. Oh, no. Put ourselves into burnout, trying to get the reversal there. Nobody home. Bur burnout against JP is just a zero-sum game. Yeah, yeah it's a little rough. But we're going to confirm all the way through. So now, oh, jeez. 2-0 lead for Max, who I feel like has been bringing the pace but not able to convert so far and get on the board. Yeah, I think it's because MJ has really been able to keep up with that pace, right? Yeah. He, he's really had no issues dealing with such a fast-paced matchup mm. for a character like JP, who sometimes wants to play it slow and steady. Just get JP got it all. 
<laughs> you got it all. Especially the anti airs. If your anti air game is tight, then it's hard to just get bowled over. Nice. That was from downtown all the way, max distance. DI wall spot. We go for the meaty DI again. Look at the follow up. Juggle is solid. DJ in full control. Massive life lead here. Jumps right into the DI though. And wow, teleporting straight over the heavy slicers there. Yeah. They're, they're literally not, they're not. There's no feeling out portion of this. They're literally <laughs> both just committing to whatever they want, whatever spacing they're at. Nobody cares. Parents aren't home. <laughs> it's just a brawl. Mm. Jumps to the other side, but didn't try to go for the throw. There's the nice punish counter. Maximoff now in burnout, and there it is. The stun set up the portal. Gonna get the kill here. Yeah. Wall splat into the stun situation. JP's got combos for that all day long. Massive potential for JP in the corner. Now we go to set point here. JP opens up with another opportunity to stack a solid 20% life lead over DJ. Oh, it's looking bad, man. Yeah, fireballs ain't gonna work in this matchup. When he's setting those portals above you, you do not want to be caught trying to throw out fireballs. And misses the combo there after the punish counter on the standing roundhouse. Mm. Oh, it gets checked. Dama converts. JP stacking on big damage. The level three comes in. He is in the yellow threshold. So that means he's at risk for dying here. Let's see. Not, not quite. Yet. Just a little bit left, but there we go. Portal is set up. Your back is up against the wall. What? Bro, what? And there it is. 3-0 from MJ in a blistering fast match. <laughs> that it was, was hard to keep so, up with. Dude, yeah. My face hurts. They, they, were, going, face they hurts. were going like anime game speed <laughs> with that, right? That's the fastest, like in terms of actions per second. That's the quickest pace JP match I've ever seen. I'm going to be honest, I don't like fighting against DJ or JP, so if I'm facing the similar situation, hey, let's go ahead and get it over with. <laughs> let's throw our, put the gloves on and swing. Yeah. I'm not trying to get lamed out and killed from the full screen by either of these guys, so Bro. I understand the impetus. And uh, it didn't work out for Max, but I like the energy. I like that they were playing at that pace a little too wild for sure in some situations, but no. That that, that felt like a... That felt like the Street Fighter equivalent of Epo versus Sendo. Yeah, oh, for all bro. my Epo fans out there, Dude. just going at it completely. Unfortunately, we're not going to see any more of Max for the rest of the night. That was the loser side yeah. of the bracket, but we are going to see more of Gamma later in the bracket. So JP advances in the loser side. We got one more of the top eight loser side qualifiers in the first round, which I believe is Axel versus. Check your bracket right now to make sure we can get that I Axel forgot. versus Rock DM. Rock DM. Okay. So. This is our loot, the first, again, first uh, round of winners, or winners of top eight only. Yeah, yeah, so, top eight loser side here. So this next match, someone is going to get sent home as well. But thank you all for joining us here on this lovely Sunday night for some Street Fighter VI action. A lot more to go. Yep, here at Astral Finish Festival 2023. We're super proud to be able to bring you guys the English-speaking stream here on TNS. It's been a lot of fun so it's far. Cool. It's a cool partnership. I, I hope this continues to grow. It was exciting to do Just Frame as well. Um, shout, yeah, again, shout out to the chat. Shout out to everybody subbing on the channel. We appreciate you guys. We love the support, as we always do. Uh, it's, it's a Sunday night. It's like a special yeah. events night for, for TNS these days. You never know what's going to pop up on the Sunday slot. So Absolutely. Uh, pretty stoked to do it with you, man. Yeah, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. It's been a while since we've been able to do some Street Fighter commentary, but we are back at it, and we're already having a very entertaining top eight here for you all. Manon's coming up. Yeah, Manon coming up, coming up. You know who else is coming up? Coming up probably and hopefully in the next couple months is some Ed action. Hopefully. Yes, that's right. Ed is our next character, isn't he? Yep, Ed and then Akuma. What's going to happen with Ed? Because he was already kind of designed as like a modern character. That is that is interesting. I'm curious. Is he going to be modern only? I can't, you know, I I kind of hope they get rid of his fireball because we don't have a real like boxer yet in the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope they lean more into that. Um, that's fair. Style. You're right. That might, that's possible. We'll see what they come with the design. All right, we're but, gonna have Manon versus Cami. Oh, the ladies are fighting. Here we go. Immediately gets a medal on deck. How do you hit a perfect parry in that situation? That is so cracked. Like he knew that there was gonna be a drive rush button at the start. It is all Axel from the first round of offense. That is a perfect Ooh. KO in 14 seconds. Oh my goodness. How's this going? Okay, this time we get respect. Cammy finds the low to open things up. Punish counter is solid. So now we move Manon into the corner. And here to air juggle and Axel is ready. We follow up with the OD. We cash another medal in. We are at four, ladies and gentlemen. The drive rush button comes in. Oh man. This is, this is going to rival the pace of the last match, I think. Certainly. Yeah, immediately throws up the super, but there's the punish. Nice. Crouching heavy punch to get the punish counter. Immediately pushing Axel to the corner. Beautiful cross cut DP. 
This is really wild, the pace that we've been seeing so far in this topic. We reset into the command grab, get our fifth medal, and it's going to be more than enough to take the first game. Well done, 1-0. <laughs> and then right into it. It's actually crazy how fast these players are playing, right? Yeah. They really just want to get into it. They want to be done with this. The command throws, the command throws from Anon have been a sniper level so far in one game and one round. I mean, she really does need to build up those medals to become scary, right? To become an actual threat. Yeah, I'm just surprised because normally, like, when people get stacked up against Manon, you have to set up the meaty button game first. Like, most people are holding up against Manon. No, Axel's just going in and taking it. That's a four medal, four medal one round point. lead in game two. Yeah, that's insane. One medal away from getting that five. That means you are so close to just getting a couple of command grabs to close things out. And this, yeah. now we're on five. It's consistently been knocked down, drive rush forward into command grab. He went for it again. Axel went for it again. Rock Dan finally jumps back in the corner and gets a big punish. Now on the other end, we land the dive kick, reset into the wall splat. We just wake up level two, oh, level wake three. Up level three. We me. tried to go for the super. Okay, you're feeling yourself like that. Yo. But now you're in burnout. Here's the pickup into the DP. Still not enough, but yep, gonna get caught there. There was nothing you can do. That was checkpoint. This is insane. This is insane. Axel does not want to have any business with playing Street Fighter. We are we are rolling dice at this point, and we just get a jump in heavy kick with Manon against Cami. Excuse Bro. me. <laughs> Huh? It looked like Cammy was trying to go for a crouching heavy punch, but did it a little too late. Oh, that's a massive drop. Oh Rock my DM. god, the damage. <laughs> yeah, punish counter, command throw with five medals from Renan. You are smoked, man. Nice Annie air. He just goes for the command throw. Are you kidding me? And that is 2 0 now for Axel. I mean. I thought last match was crazy in terms Dude. of pace, right? In terms of how fast they were playing this match. Who does this to Kami, by the way? Like, yeah. <laughs> this Kami's usually the snowball character. Exactly, but I mean, Axel just sticking on to Rock DM here like glue. Mm. Finally there, yeah. I think I think for Rock DM, you kind of need to space things out a little bit. Slow the pace of the match sure. down, because if you get caught up in this wild ride, that's way more opportunities for Axel to get those command grabs in. Yeah. The jumps, man. The jumps are really hurting us because when Axel gets the anti air, they're converting into big way. There we go. I want to see that dive kick come back into the game. Rakian gets it started at just the perfect time. Then we find the punish counter combo in the corner. Anon not dead yet, but it's so close. Any button would do it. Oh, that was scary. Yeah, put yourself into scary. the corner like that. Terrifying. That was scary. Well done. Okay. We have a lead. We have a round lead for Rock DM. Axel reaching in the neutral. We get the anti air. Yeah, it's it's going to benefit Rocky M to slow things down a lot. Look at this, two Dude. command grabs back to back there with the drive rushes. This just doesn't happen, to be honest. You get a dive kick punish counter situation. Axel's been caught reaching on the throw tech a few times. Rocky M needs to cash in on those situations. Oh my God, bro! Four medals again in a single round. That's that's a new game. You go from. Zero to four medals again, like you said, in a comeback situation. This is how Manon was designed to play. Okay, big punish counter opportunity. We had this earlier. We're good again. Everything is going in your way if you're rocking in right now. Close up the hole. Play clutch. Yes, we blocked the wake up level one. What's our biggest combo? We need to break it out right now. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, got it. Didn't even have to spend the level two, but here we go. We're on the board, baby. Assassinated. Yeah, I love this one. So cool. It is very cool. Cammy's just great in this game. They did a great job for us on all the World Warriors bringing them back and the new characters. This has been a fantastic display for both these players. Rock Game finally gets on the board. Slows things down. Nice punish counter combo. Well done. Yeah, getting that meaty standing heavy punch as well to get some plus frames on deck. Nice. I love the corner carry here. So important what? for Rock Game to get that corner positioning. But here we go. Another command grab on deck. Perfect parry happens. There we go. No, <laughs> we drop and Axel was hitting it. Was slamming the super. I said you better not have a gap in this pressure. Yeah, but unfortunately it's a side switch super, so he actually puts himself in the corner. It doesn't matter if you just command throw two times in a row again. This is not easy, guys, by the way. Rock DM is giving him so much respect. Yeah, I mean, that, you have to be able, you have to be giving him a lot of respect for them to land that many command grabs on you, right? Mm -hmm. But now, here we go, staying outside that range, utilizing these pokes, that crouching medium kick, great as well. Yeah, Axel finally doesn't bait on a shimmy as well. Anti-air perfect parry is such a field bad man. Yeah, and then we go to five. 
That trades. Okay, Rock Dean was ready. Good conversion. Dude. Whoa, what is the range? Dude. My god. One more, we could do it. Yep, drive impact. Has level three on deck as well. Only spends the level two, finishing it with style. Axel taking it 3 1. Sheesh. Rock Dean giving him the nod. It's like, all right, bro. All right, you did your thing. And I'm going to be honest, Axel played the same style in, in Just Frame as well. So this is not, I'm not, it's not unexpected, but I'm surprised that Rock DM usually, usually the grappler has to prove first that you cannot jump out of my command grabs. That's, that's on the grappler to make, it's like, it's like football. You got to set up the pass by running the ball first. Like, that's the idea, right? He just went out there and threw Hail Marys, bombs, and was like, yeah. I'm landing. I'm getting touchdowns. I mean, I like what I'm seeing there, too, right, uh, from Axel. It, it's a style. Normally, what you see from a lot of Manon players is they want to utilize for pretty decent pokes, right? Yes, they want to kind of play that poke, poke game, game uh, condition and pepper the opponent with these pokes, and then try and get in to get those setups for the command grabs. Yeah. Instead, Axel's going, I know I need medals. Why am I wasting time? Let me just get in there and start putting the pressure on you immediately and not I don't even want to play footsies. And it works. It works for the way that he plays he got it. Overwhelmed. Yeah, he just tries to overwhelm his opponent with <laughs> offense. And you have to prove. You have to prove that you have to push him out and play footsies. It's true. I read Rock DM really let him get away with that one. So that's the last we're gonna see from Rock for the rest of this tournament. Uh moving on, Uriel is gonna be facing Axel. That's gonna be an explosive matchup when we see that for later sure. on. We're going to get Jazz Dero versus Gamma first. We're going to get JP Mirror. <laughs> JP Mirror. Everyone's favorite JP Mirror coming up here. It's not as bad as it used to be. Nah, but. I think in the last Just Frame, we had like five. <laughs> in the last tournament I watched at Just Frame, we had like five JPs. Yeah, what is it? Two JPs in top eight here? And there was like 14 in the top 48 of Evo or something like that. Like there was a staggering amount of JPs. I mean, he's a fun character. He's the boss character, you know, quote unquote. He's a popular character too. He's cool. So I understand the popularity, but um, we're seeing a lot of people finally dig in on that matchup and, and learn it. So they're getting weeded out a little bit. So we gotta get, you know, we gotta have one. You have a Luke Mirror or a JP Mirror every now and then. That's, this is the way it is. You know, above all, though, we're talking about JP being fun, about him being the boss, about him being cool. Above all, drip, drip, drip. he's really good. Yeah, he's great. That's he's res gets results. He, yeah, he gets results, all right? <laughs> purple, purple. Relax, bro. Relax. Oh, he's an accountant. Okay? Shut up, guys. He's an accountant. Y'all can't be doing this thing. Um. This man helped. This man helped M Bison dodge taxes. That is so for years. weird. That had to be a pivot. I'm sure. Like, I, was that really what they like? What? This is such a strange. Bro, he's he was fighting the strongest, the strongest enemy out there, the IRS. That's bro, crazy, okay? dude. This is so so crazy. no surprise, he's top tier. <laughs> That's so weird. That there was all this like. Like, is he G or like related to G or no. like an alternative? Like, the, all this lead up to who is JP, and then they finally like released it in like a blurb. Like, they, they gave a little bit of info. A face. <laughs> JP <laughs> players wash their hands before going to the <laughs> Oh, guys, come on. Show some love to your top tier players. We need them just like everybody. You know, it's a great decision from Character Select. That's a lot of famous minds in fighting game space have said that you need to make the best decision at the Character Select screen. And now we have the JP in here. Jazz Dero in the red versus Gama in the purple. Look at this. Yeah. Yeah. Full screen options, baby. It's a second person shooter. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but here we go. Faking out with the feint. Immediately goes for the pierce this time. Oh, man. Red with the back against the wall. Purple tries to close. Jazz Dero fights back. Oh, and then we just hit the DI. No, Gamma was pretty good with those early, but so was Jazz Dero. I'm expecting we're going to see a lot of those DIs come oh, out. Oh, unfortunate drop there. That was your opportunity to close out the round. And then the really? command grab, EX. That does so much damage. Yeah, the OD command grab from JP does a ton. Really, we just poke out with the overhead. Look at these guys, man. Okay. That was so scary for MJ, right? MJ nearly throwing that entire round away off of one single drop, but was still able to bring things back. Neutral jump in that situation was so brave, and just a great read on the opening drive rush normal. We almost get a punish counter, but we put ourselves in the corner, so Gamma needs to be careful. We do have to confirm here, stacking in a bunch of damage on Jazz Hero. Yeah, immediately ending it with the pierce so that we can set up that portal here. Now starting to close the distance, but wow! It just gets bonked right on top of the dome. Stick normal, baby. 
is to go combo into the level three. So we're just outside the critical art range. That's unfortunate for Jazz Dero. So we don't get the extra on it, but then we get a little bit more life to work with. Even things up in a big way. And then with the drive impact against the Gamma Drive Rush, we are now in the life lead. How do we confirm this? Well done. Rounds are even in game one. Very, very nice, this back and forth game between these two JPs. Some respect this time. They both kind of open with a hard read option. This time we just say, hmm. Yeah, well, someone's got to close the distance, right? You can't sit back and do Pierce forever. Someone has to make a move. And Jazz attempts to, but MJ is able to land a perfect parry and send him straight back to full screen. It, just, it also feels like sometimes the first person who's forced to make that move also kind of loses. <laughs> this is an interesting matchup. Back into the Pierce Wars. Oh, he spins. Gamma tries to get away with one on the OD departure, and Jazz Dero punishes. So now we have a, a meter lead for Jazz Dero, who tries to close the distance. Sends out the level two. What it really ends up being is whoever has the life deficit has to move in, right? That's the main thing. When you have the life lead, you can sit back and do Pierce as long as you want to try and keep the opponent out. It's a game of resources. I mean, how surprised are we in the, in the count here? That it would come down to who could spin the best. Right now, it's looking like Jazz Gamma wakes up with a level one super. This is something that you're eventually going to have to whip out with the JP get, get the game plan. And it paid off. Uh-oh, back up against the wall. Both of them in burn now, but MJ is able to finally get that drive gauge back. Oh, he's getting peppered. Yeah, he's just got to hold this. He's like, this is what this feels like? Yeah, it's this the, is what I've been doing, people. It had no meter, had no drive gauge. There was not really much you could do. You could try <laughs> to approach, but like, if you get hit, you're dead. Wow, who would have thought that JP sucks so bad against JP and Burnout? <laughs> so unfortunate. I think everyone sucks against yeah. JP and Burnout. 1-0 lead. Purple over red. Does zero at a meter deficit early. Nice. Why did he get a fake fireball? That is so wild. He's been doing it. It's That's so the wild. He's been doing the fake fireball consistently here. Mm. There we go. Teleports right on in. Going to be able to close out that round with a perfect KO. Good timing. Nicely timed. Set up that rhythm. Created a lull in the situation. Went for the departure teleport and cashed in on some big damage. Gama now with a perfect. There's a round lead here in game two. That's a little bit of a conversion. Get away from him here. But he's, he's still at a small lead. Here. Yeah. Here. Nice, he goes into the low, so he actually checks him there. Had the frame trap situation, it gets away from us. Okay, this is an opportunity for Jazz Dero now. And we need, oh, it's two for two on wake up level ones. Absolutely, working out perfectly. And I like how we were just kind of hanging around the portal there to make sure that he couldn't teleport to get out of the corner, right? We wanted to see if he goes anywhere, we're gonna immediately go for that anti-air option. We get the wall splat, so now Jazz Dero's starting to try to run away with this round. We are close to burnout. And we've seen that Jazz is pretty typically keen to put themselves in the burnout if they feel like it's favorable. So it could be coming up soon. I like it. We're grinding this out. Not committing too hard. That Ooh, was cheeky. That yeah. was really, really cheeky. Just throwing out the button there in uh -huh. order to force MJ to try and respond. That was cute. I like that. Well done. So now we have tied rounds here. Jazz basically sitting on a, a meter lead. We're not quite at three, but we're, we're basically there. Yeah, has it now. Immediately goes for the OD mm. portal, but does get caught by MJ's own portal. Yeah, Gamma waited it out there. Able to be patient. Now we have a massive life lead and a massive drive lead. Things are looking rough for Jazz. Okay, we do poke out of the OD, the spikes. Uh oh, there we go. Hit really? with the heartburn install. Yeah, a bit. Oh, that's what it feels like. Yeah, it does. That converts it to a lead for Jazz, which is great. Whoa, that was so awkward. That was a really weird situation that ends up paying off for Gamma, who's going to be able to cash into a level three of their own. That's more than enough in that situation to kill. So now that is a 2-0 lead for Gamma over Jazz Dero. Oh, wow. I mean, you were in a good position, too, after getting that level three, but unfortunately it slipped through his fingers here. And now you have to get a reverse 3-0 if you want to stay alive here in this bracket, because this is the loser side. This is the loser side. Yes, we're going JP. We'll be going home. And Jazz Zero opens up with a lead this time in the first round of Game 3. Oh, but then Gamma just finds the perfect time to jump in and put boots on him. Yeah, how about that zoner putting away 35% life like that? And they barely spend on it. Classic zoner things, you know? Yeah, and he does it again. 
Yep, there we go. Senju bouncing off the wall, but misses the sweet chin music. Still is going to get tossed. And there we go. The swipe from the ghost means we're at set point. Don't worry, chat. MJ's trying to set you free. Stop. <laughs> oh my god. Desdero trying to fight back in the situation. Down three stocks, though. Yeah, set point. MJ is trying to make a statement here. Saying, I got the most cash. I'm the account. Look at this. Bro. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. They know what they're doing. Desdero says, come get it. Uh, we get the juggle. All right. Let's see. I want to see it go down to zero. I want to see the clock go to zero. Yep, again, here we go. Faking out with the faint on the ghost, right? Gets the teleport in finally over uh, over Jazz's Pierce. Gonna try and capitalize on this situation. Mm. Okay, Juggle comes in. How's the game gonna wrap this up? Level three, yep, there it is. Hook, line, and sinker. MJ takes it, 3-0. 3-0 indeed with the, with the... The JP Mira, I gotta be honest, it can kind of go either way. So I'm not surprised to see someone get skunked out. Uh, Jazz is a great player. Like I said, I've, I've held L's to Jazz before in bracket and TNS. So I know they're they're legit, uh, but it, it's a mirror match. You know, you, you get skunked. I hope you don't feel too bad going out on that one. Go back and watch some footage, see where you get some opportunities. But yeah, well done to Gama. That's their second time seeing them. And, uh, and moving ahead. Yeah, moving on in that bracket there. I mean, this bracket has been going at a pretty fast pace as well. I'm just kind of blown away by how, again, how aggressive and how active these players are being. You can uh, thank Maxima for that yeah, in the matchup earlier with it, the DJ versus JP. <laughs> it's just interesting to see how different players, like the different play styles from all over the world, yeah. right? And that's what we were talking about too with the systems in Street Fighter 6. They allow for those different kinds of play styles. If you want to be hyper aggressive, Drive Rush enables that that's in right. a big way, all right? Or you can be a little bit more patient, try and stuff your opponent when they go for those Drive Rushes. But it makes Street Fighter 6 a really fun game to play and a really fun game and interesting game to watch. I agree. And let's be honest. We've, it's not the first zoner mirror we've ever seen in our life, you know, especially a top tier, yeah. top tier zoner mirror. I mean, I come from Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is, you gotta, you gotta find the beauty in everything in life, you understand? Like, yeah, some things are gonna be against the traditional yeah. idea of what you wanna see out of every single matchup, but I had to watch Zero vs. Zero for four solid straight years, basically, in almost every grand finals I watched, and you do find beauty in watching players hunt for angles and play with resources and execute that matchup at a really, really high level. So uh, congratulations to Gamma, who is the superior JP this time. Yeah, I mean, that was the first match, too, so far that was actually a little bit more slower pace than what You're we've right. seen so far from the right. rest of this top eight at the moment. But we are going to be moving on into our next top eight match here, which, again, should be a loser side matchup. I think we get Axel again, right? Yeah, Axel versus Uriel. Ken versus Manon. I got, I you know, I gotta be honest. I'm not caping for Manon players here. I'm definitely not downplaying Ken. I'm not giving Ken any freebies here. <laughs> any leeway. You're not gonna get away complaining with me. But I think Manon can actually challenge this matchup. Of course, it sucks if she gets knocked over because she has a, a crappy reversal game. So having to spin bar is not is not what you want. But she, but from the range that Ken likes to pepper with, like stand heavy kick, stand heavy punch, fireball, etc., Manon can challenge. So this is it's not a great matchup for her, but she could do this. I mean, a punish counter jump in is a great way to start. I think that the biggest threat is that crouching medium kick, right? And then when you get put into the corner, Correct. Ken's corner pressure is just yes. like second to none. And that's where Manon really suffers when her back is up against the wall. Right. But in the neutral, at least, you know, there are matchups where Ken can really dominate in the neutral. I think of like Jury, who's a really solid, amazing character. But she kind of struggles with Ken in the neutral sometimes. Oh, oh my man. God, bro. Oh, brother. Yeah. Okay. Ariel's caving in the skull of Axel a little bit here in the first round. After a solid exchange from Axel up front, look how scared Make it this stop! Is. Make it stop! Oh my god! This is only a combo in Street Fighter. Let's go, Ken Masters. I take back everything I said. This character's broken. All right, nice. Able to get that anti air immediately putting Ken on the ground. Finally gets two medals on deck. And this is what we're going to see a lot here from Uriel, right? Just jumping. Yes. Anytime you see a drive rush forward, just jump. It's way more. No, we wow. got a drop in a scrambly situation. Axel gets left, whipping, trying to get the bag now and burn out. Ken with all the control here. What I was saying before is it, 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 it's, it's a much better trade to take the anti-air than it is to take the grab. And here we go. Drive rush on in with a standing heavy punch. 
Good night, Manon. Let's go to game two. That sucks. That sucks for the day. You went for it. It didn't work out. That's okay. You got to get that, that game out of your head. That was definitely all Uriel. If you're Manon, you got to got to dig deep a little bit. But you, Uriel did exactly what you're supposed to do there. Ken just smothered the options out of Manon. This time, we get a beautiful challenge from Manon at the start. Converts into a nice little 15, 20%. Yep, there Two we metals, go. so we're at three now. Creates a little bit of space, though. Once you create space, that gives Uriel room to start establishing a game plan. Nice with the EX anti air. Mm -hmm. And gets the combo into the metal as well. Four on bar. Yeah, I say, that overhead is also so cheap. It just checks your opponent so well after the command grad situation. Good job to Uriel to block it out. But it keeps that containment, you know, even if you block it. Axel doing the right things to win that first round. Are we almost. Looking for the perfect parry there. Now we get the drive rush in and just hit a button two times in a row. It dropped, but it didn't matter. We got the combo anyways. And I actually like how we, we end a lot of our combos there in that, that spinning sweep, right? Because yes. it keeps the opponent knocked down right in front of you. That's which allows Manon right. to go for those mix-ups. But my god, this you're dead. This is what Axel does. He just likes to spin the meter oh. and go for it. It is Manon's only reversal option, which is to spin the bar. So you have to do it from time to time. Well done from Uriel, converting in the throw loop situation and getting the round win with a chance of going up for a 2-0 lead over Axel. Yeah, I mean, you have four medals on deck, but trying to get the opportunity there to force a situation where you can get a command grab is going to be a lot easier said than done. Uriel being a lot more cautious about the approach. Nice standing heavy kick. Gets away with one, but the second time, Manon just jumps in. Ten players love the fish with that standing heavy kick. It's a really, really good button, but it is a commitment. Nice job, nice job. Axel punishing. Well done, we're gonna spin on the level two. This is so close, not quite burnout yet. And wow, what a what? whiff there. Called out the jump, the temp, and he's gonna die for it. Manon sucks. No, hold on, you're alive. That was a huge Manon sucks moment. Didn't get put into yellow quite yet, so you're still alive. That could have worked so much, brother. One button press could do it. Oh, but really? speaking of one button press, there you go with the standing light punch from Manon. Axel able to tie things up. You know what was really interesting there? The moment that Axel got four medals, he didn't even attempt to go for another grab. No. Just using the medals as a threat. That's an right? adjustment. Yep, absolutely. Very, very well said. That is something that you have to do as a non-player. Great punish counter on the standing heavy kick. That's what I'm talking about. And players love that because it's a little bit further than the stand heavy punch. So when they feel like that they can't work in the stand heavy punch anymore, they're going to go for that heavy kick. Nicely done for Axel getting the punish. And then the cross up, we're not able to convert. Things are getting weird, Jobber. Yeah, a bit scrambly there. Tried to uh, turn around real quick with the command grab there to halt the drive rush. Didn't want to get put into the corner, so he was trying something cheeky, but it didn't quite work out. He oh. spends the reversal, and it works there. Putting Ariel in a bad situation. We wake up DI with the last bit of stock that we have. Oh no, Ariel's gonna have to advance though. Wanted to keep that corner pressure alive, and this time we wake up with a level one of our own, just in the block stream. Oh, and the running DP to catch you jumping over the fireball. Nowhere you are safe jumping over a fireball against Ken. Yeah, nice option from Ariel. Well done. Even without the, the drive rush, it's <laughs> just oh. using the run cancel. That was interesting there. It looked like some kind of a drop, maybe a missed input. But unfortunately, lost momentum. And now Uriel trying to capitalize on this opportunity here. Oh, just too far out. Ken gets punished. Non stringing together some situations here. The metal combo is going to get us to three. Give him a little bit of space. Both players just engaging slightly outside of the range of the other. This is the first time we've seen Jinrai try to get engaged in this matchup. And Axel just makes him pay for it. Says, all right. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to whip and, and super between your strings. Yeah, and utilizing that lost opportunity there to build up another medal. So sitting at four going into this next round. They really have been back and forth so far. But again, look, Uriel is sitting on critical on level three. So this is going to be uh, mm -hmm. dangerous to try and approach at all. One straight medium kick or a drive oh. impact. And you're about to eat a lot. There it is. And you're in burnout. This sucks, man. Axel went for the hard reads of hard reads. That was a big call out. But Uriel was paying attention. The <gasps> DI punishes there. A fireball would do it. Yes, yeah. it does. Massive jump out, though. He really tried to go for the throw there, Jarber. That was so greedy. Yeah, very greedy with the amount of life deficit that you are at, especially in burnout. And there we go. Just a couple of dragon lash kicks. And now Uriel is sitting at 2-1, threatening to eliminate Axel from the bracket for one more game. Yeah, that was a great response from Uriel. 
Well done. Now a 2-1 lead. Ooh, just missed the jump in. But we get the follow-up situation. Well done. Axel with the lead. Chooses to spend a little bit and try to create some offense. Ariel jumps out and a whiff on the throw. Ariel with a big punish, able to create some separation and now moving into the corner. Oh, brother. This is like a Ken round. Yeah, checked on the dome there with that overhead kick. Frame kill two on the crouching light punch. You can time the meaty standing heavy. Nice. DI at the perfect time. Axel paying attention. Last time we missed the jump combo. Not this time. Down to three, or excuse me, up to three. Metal skin just staying heavy punch into the level two. Wow. Yikes. Okay. Let's go, Justin. Yeah. All right, that's a W. Well Wait. done. Or I'll say it on set point. Exactly. Goes to the drive rush immediately into the dragon lash. Jumps straight over the command grab attempt. Now Axel is just has Axel gotten a single command grab in the past? Okay, there, there we, we go. go. <laughs> We're cashing in. Let's say most of the medals that we built up have been through hit grabs in combat. Sometimes I like that. But Axel is teaching you never give up on your dreams. That's why we level one super again. Nobody home. Ariel gets the punish counter on the other side. We move Manon into the corner. She challenges, gets the punish counter, immediately cancels into the level two. Is that going to be enough? Yes, it is. We're still alive. Yeah, holding on to life desperately here. But again, you are still in set point. Back is up against the ropes, and you're about to get knocked out if you're not careful. Nice. Perfect time to jump in there. Jump light kick as well, so we make sure that the hitbox is tight and we get the combo. Putting Manon into the corner here. Dangerous situation. A jump back button. Oh my god. He punched her head straight into the dirt. He's holding north, man. She goes for it again in the max distance punish. The medium kick target combo. Well done. Ken closing the distance. Cross cut DP is good. We do lose the corner here. So that is the one problem. Axel could make something happen with the cage. So close to a burnout, but not quite there. Beautiful punish from Ariel, creating the separation, and then we just drive rush into the throw. Ariel's gonna take it. Three to one over Axel. Yeah, absolutely clean and gameplay wow. there. Just proved to be a little too much in the neutral game to deal with uh, Ken, right? Yes. Uh, at least in that matchup there with Manon. She does have decent buttons, but you're going up against the likes of Ken Masters, who can just absolutely steamroll you and keep the pressure going. And we talk about, you know, she doesn't have any reversals outside of supers, which we saw a lot of to try and get off. But, man, he was calling out those supers like crazy. Yeah, you're right. I, I do think that... Axel was just hitting the gas over and over and over and trying to say, I'm over this, you know, I just want to reverse the situation. I don't want to play this out. And Uriel was ready. They were already playing at that speed and just didn't, you know, fall victim to the snowball, didn't let it get scrambling and let it get too weird and able to flex the options of Ken. Even even when Axel was able to, to represent a couple of punishes, some good DIs here and there, yeah, just, it sure. just wasn't enough. Uriel is such a solid competitor. And now we get to move on to our winner's final set, which will be Lou Gabo versus Liquid O coming up soon here. I mean, it's already been, look at this, 3-2 in the bracket for uh, both sides of winner's side of top eight. And then in the loser side, it was double 3-0s for yeah, the first it round. Yeah, blow up. And then Gama, of course, 3-0 Jazdiro. So that was, that was pretty brutal as well. But yeah, we are, we're wrapping up. We're getting into the top four portion of our tournament. We've been live for, you know, on Street Fighter 6 for a little over an hour. Uh, this is how this game is. You know, we moved to the first of three pretty early in the lifespan of this game, yeah. all things considered. And we all just felt it. I remember sitting doing Evo pools of, you know, production for Street Fighter 6. And I was like, God, how many matches did I see today? Because it was first of two, right? Yeah. And it was just like staggering how many how many games that went before us I mean, so quickly. Most entrance of any game in Evo of all time, right? And it was going like, like you know, just just a res, res, like Street Fighter Six. Of course, it can slow down, but because of the drive rush mechanics, especially people, you know, the expression part that you mentioned earlier, yes, for sure. people can have fun. They can push the you know push the the pedal anytime they want to and, and hit the pace. Yeah, no, it, it's one of the most fun aspects about Street Fighter Six. And you know, still there's a lot on the horizon too. I know they just said recently. Uh, that they finished development on output number three. Oh, so yeah, they I saw finished that. all the development. That's just, cool. You know, we need so that. It, it's done. It's yeah, ready. We need that. You know, they just don't want to put it out as soon as it's done because they do have, you know, a schedule that they want to set for content. But of course, we still have uh, we still have a couple of characters on the horizon as well. I can't wait for Akuma. Modern Akuma with one button Raging Demon is going to be the funniest thing ever. Don't say that. 
Don't say that. <laughs> it's gonna be the funniest thing ever, bro. Modern? No, Luke is gonna be not Luke. Excuse me. Ed's gonna be the only modern only character, and Kuma's gonna be classic only. You have to hold that. That would actually be kind of sick. I'm not gonna lie. All right. Speaking of kind of sick, <laughs> we have Dawson versus Kimberly in winners finals. In the winners finals of a tournament tonight. You all are getting a treat here. This is a matchup that we very rarely ever get to see. I'm excited to see what both players are going to be able to bring out in this, I would say, very, like, controversial matchup, probably. I mean, like, I, I can see Dawson holding an L here because of the overwhelming offense from Kimberly. But also, you know, Kimberly's got to play the minigame. Got to get through the zone. Yeah, for sure. She has to find a way in. And Dawson can cover a lot of those angles, right? Teleport is going to be a good tool once Dawson whips one of those long-range buttons. Hmm. Get the punish counter. It's a little one, but we take that absolutely. And most importantly, we had the side switch. Unfortunately, we lose it again. Yeah, and here we go. Challenging you. Getting those punishes with the crouching light punches. That's the bread and butter here for Dalsum. But now your back is up against the wall, and this is where Kimberly can get oh, crazy. Brother. Yeah, this sucks. Ooh, big combo off the spray can. We have to reset. So close, though. All this pressure, I mean, you got to believe it's going to lead into a win eventually. So many resources are on deck for Lou. Nicely done. That's a one-round lead over Dalsum early. Okay. Back in the neutral. Dalsum pressing. And then the teleport just comes in on the Yoga Flame. Perfectly timed. Seizing all that momentum. And the perfect carry, too. Didn't really get much off of it, you know, but that's fine. You're still keeping Dalton in the corner, which is the core part of it. Shutting down his attempt at escaping. There's the Izuna drop immediately into the pickup. Are we going to see level three? Yes, we do. Yeah, this is, this is a train wreck so far for game one for Liquid. Dalton just getting pulled over. The momentum going completely in the side of Kimberly. And now the level three install is active for that extra speed to deal with. Weird situation where the yeah. DI just kind of completely whiffs. I don't think anybody was ready for that. Wait a minute. Calls back into the corner, into the draw. Oh, it combo! Wow, that is unfortunate. Brother. Brother. So we did not get the wall splat. No stun. Yeah, Liquid needed that. Like, absolutely needed that. We might still get one, though. If we get a stun here? Oh, oh he tried to. Yeah, but you didn't have enough health to actually armor through the crouching light punch. Yeah, that was rough. Unfortunate time for Liquid, who had the right idea, right idea, excuse me, but of course it came at the wrong time when they were already out of life, so not able to convert into a situation to get into that comeback. But still, I'd like to see the life, you know, at the end of that round. Dawson was fighting back. Beautifully timed DI right on the last frame, and now we get the punish. Things are going the opposite way to start game two. Yeah, for sure. And now you see Lugabo being a little bit more patient about how to approach. Right? I said, hold on, okay, I gotta reevaluate how I'm going to get in. You saw that shimmy like, hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> you can hit me? Yeah, let me think about this for a second. And here we go. Now right back on in, putting Liquid into the corner with that throw. What a trade. Yeah, that sucks. Whoa, <laughs> what was that? I like it, and that's a second baited reversal. Wake up level two. You were calling for this earlier today, and it's, then we get it. It's such a good option. Yeah, it's, it's, it is like really, I would say like weirdly, like like who's labbing that, right? Who's labbing their wake up setups against Dawson's wake up level two? Yeah, for sure. And especially if it whiffs, it still stays in the air. You know what I mean? Yes. It's going to come back down. So it allows you to really, uh, sometimes your opponent's just going to freeze. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. Lou finding the hit in neutral. The stand medium kick converting into corner pressure. We land another bread and butter combo here. The light bar from Dawson draining so quickly. Trying to find the opportunity to press at the clutch moment. The spray can online punish counter throw. He's so close to burnout jobber. Yeah, the timing on the spray can is so good here from Mugabo, right? He's able to really just squeeze out those throws. It feels like just a couple of frames before it explodes and forces the block. Yeah, that's such a is a crazy mechanic that Kimberly can bring into the, the dynamics with the spray cans. With Khan trying to reload there. That's why she only gets a couple per game, right? She has to refill them just because of how powerful they can be. Yeah, they were they were like, we can't let this girl be too good. <laughs> you know, like they, they, they're really very intentful on the design of Kimberly. DI all the way downtown, oh. and we get the wall splat. Beautifully done. I like this going into the level three, get the install online. Get a little bit of drive meter gain going in our favor. How are we going to press? It's so strange. We just sort of like stood, just the, like a wall playing for completely for position. One more combo here could do it. Yeah. And overhead. Whoa! Going really? for the EX. But actually, okay. Okay, I thought they didn't hit for a second. Yeah, it looked weird. That looked weird. Critical art is amazing, though, because this puts 
Not only loot goes into burnout, but the, the light bars really do close the distance here. How do we put this together? Flipping on in. Yeah, you have to get aggressive, right? <laughs> Try and force something to happen there. He's dead! Yep, get the dry brush in. There we go. It didn't Liquid even combo. Up. Didn't need to. Don't enough. We have a 1-1 one, one in winner's finals of this tournament with Dawson versus Kimberly, guys. Dawson and Kimberly in winner's finals is actually kind of mental when you consider that in losers, there's a JP and a Ken sitting Lurking. down there. Lurking. They're like, <laughs> Twitch chat having fun right now. <laughs> you better enjoy it. Don't life. forget about us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all should be marking out right now. I know I am. I got to be honest. I say this on the, on the Wednesday night weeklies here at TNS. Kimberly is my favorite character to watch in Street Fighter 6. Period. She you know, she, the way she definitely is a really, a really interesting it's character. Explosive, it's explosive. You're talking about like people like Shine, right, who play at such an yeah. elite level. To see that character evolve and come from where they, a lot of people were really ruling her out at the start of Season 1 of Street Fighter 6. She has come a long way getting things started quickly against Dawson here. In Game 3, another back-to-back -back combo situation. This bro is hurting. Somebody send some help for Dalsim. She just has such a very flashy move kit, a uh, uh, tool set, right? Look at that, that yes. standing medium kick immediately drive rushing on in. That is something that has really carried mm. Lugavo earlier on in the bracket as well, getting those shimmies with them. Yeah. Yeah. Such an interesting character. You know what? I'm pretty sure her crouching medium kick is plus on block. I could be wrong about that, chat. Just go ahead and slay me if I am, but I feel like one of her buttons is like really broke. I learned about it. I, like, I don't I don't know nothing about this character. Plus on block frames uh, just from your regular normals, uh, they come That's Luke and stuff. far between. Yeah. That's Luke stuff. Nice corner juggle. We get the spray can online. Go for the shimmy. Dawson does not bite. Yeah, the spacing too, just avoiding the drill. Gonna get a nice confirm. Next hit, we're definitely going into level three. There it is. This is so exhausting for Dawson players. I mean, every single game that Dawson is in, you know you have to go through the struggle. You have to deal with this. Your back is against the wall. It takes so much mental energy to play clutch in this situation. Find the exact moment that you have to get out. And that's a Dawson versus Ryu, right? You're playing Dawson against Kimberly. This character is designed to destroy your mental stack, to overload you, tilt you, and frustrate you in an offensive situation. So I can only imagine how liquid feels. Right? And you know, one of the big things too is that Dalton really does have to rely on drive reversal more so than any other character yes. in the game, right? But every single drive reversal we saw in the first two games was blocked. Smoked. So yes. now you're seeing Liquid. There we go, finally. Because in that last game, Liquid didn't throw out a single drive reversal because right. he scared. kept getting punished. So we got a teleport punish there. And now we punish the Macho Man. So we're getting some momentum here. Nice challenge. Just gets the sweep out of nowhere. Anti-air perfect parry comes in in the clutch moment. A couple of posts, a couple of situations here could do it for Dawson. Just as Luke goes kind of for something risky at a life deficit, waking up with a level one. Oh, here we go, getting the chop on in. Teleporting away, and there's a nice whiff punish. Liquid able to survive that round with over half health. I like it. We're fighting back, baby. Yeah, we're down, but we're not out. We saw this also the last time Liquid was on screen. Digging deep, trying to play the long game. This is also something that you have to have in your toolkit as a Dawson player. You have to be able to adapt over long amounts of game. Nice challenge there. We're trying to drill. We're trying to get out of this. We teleport at the perfect moment. Steal all that space. Great juggle as well. We're playing super sharp here. Yeah, but the perfect carry on the drill means that a back throw is coming in, and now you are in ground zero again, KP. Yeah, this is rough. Teleport comes out, but Liquid is ready. And then we teleport out of the situation again. Winter Pressure coming in. Well, if we were managing that DI, we would have a huge punish there. And actually, that would have taken the game. We convert? Yes, we do. It's a 2-2 game. Kimberly versus Dawson, guys. This is crazy. There we go. I love this level three, man. It's, it's awesome. so good. It is really, really good. Yeah, this, this is a credit to Liquid, man, showing a lot of resilience here. Because Lou was looking like it was going to be a train just bowling over Dalton in this matchup. So this has been a tremendous response from Liquid. And a great throw tech there. Oh, my goodness. That's a drop combo. Oh, that's okay, though. You're so high in the air that, you know, you can land in time to keep the pressure going. Another great side switch, though. We Ooh. missed the any here. Oh, that's brutal, man. Yeah, that clean hit in the air, but Dalsam with the double chop again, utilizing the that? drive impact to put Lugavo in the burnout. So smart. So sharp. I'm liking the game plan mindset that Liquid is playing here. They're playing sharp within the context of Street Fighter 6, the back dash out of that situation. We've seen it all night long, coming in massively clutch for Liquid. We have to keep the position alive here, no matter what. We do not let Kimberly get over our head. Wake up level two. Is it good enough? 
No, but it's weird. See, your team and I talking about freezing, but instead was right in that opportunity. It shot a little too far. There's the punish. Set point now for Lugabo. Yeah, well done from Lou there to wait and not trade with the level two, because that's where things can get uncomfortable. Waited all the way out until the ball was clear, and then went with the running for combo to get clear. Beautiful job punishing the OD slide from Liquid. Also starting off with a solid 30% life lead here in the second round of game five. This is as, this is as competitive as it could be. Oh man, next hit, we are going straight into the install. Scores the throw, putting him into the corner. This sucks. Oh, oh. yeah, the punish. All right, all right, drive reversal is able to finally get out. Oh, what a chase down the air-to-air -air combo into the Tatsu. The life bars are dead even. Now Lou takes a perfect confirm to get the lead. We combo into level three. It's going to put Liquid close to burnout, not all the way there, but all the advantages are stacking up for Lou right now. Yeah, not a lot of meter yet on Liquid's side. About to get level two. There it is, but it's too little, too late. Oh, brother, so scared. Oh! That armor break, so rare that we actually see that in the armor again. break situation again. I think Lou's getting a little greedy here. He yeah. just wants to end this. The fire is so good at breaking that armor, but wow, trying to teleport on in. Didn't wait long enough for the fireball to reach Kimberly to actually cover that teleport. Unfortunate. You want to talk about getting a little too, uh, a little too greedy. That was still, I think, sharp gameplay from Liquid. Sure. If you walk away from that set, you're still in the tournament. Obviously, you have a lot of work to do. You're going to be waiting in the losers' finals of the winner from Gamma and Uriel. You're going to get served a top tier. It's going to either be Ken or it's going to be JP. So, no, your journey does not get any easier at this point. But you already beat a JP once. You saw Jazz Dero lose to Liquid in the winner's side of this tournament. So we know that they can handle that matchup, and it looked pretty rough, right? for yeah. for Dawson. So there's some potential alive there. I am sure that Ken is a great matchup against Dawson too. So either Bro, way, it's gonna be rough. I, I I wouldn't even wish that matchup on my worst enemy. No, dude, no, because it's pretty good for Ryu. And I know if I'm having a pretty good time in a matchup as a Ryu player. But Ken's having a better time. <laughs> definitely my, you know, my super soldier brothers and sisters and Luke and Ken are, are doing great in that matchup. So good luck in the rest of the tournament. I'm, I'm so excited to see the Dawson represented at a high level though. Up next, yeah, we are going to have Ken versus JP. Yep, and so now we're going back down to the loser side of the bracket here. So loser of this does get sent home and is out of top three. I mean, it's been crazy so far. Uh, absolutely incredibly fun bracket. This this entire event it's has awesome. been really fun, right? I hope we always get to do these. It's, it's, a, it's such a cool thing to partner up and be able to you know provide some commentary as well uh, with our sister stream and, and just doing this event. So it is really awesome. Yeah, I see you, Rel. I didn't know that whenever I threw on the Domamu stalking flare shirt that I was going to be seeing the Dalsum do work like this. <laughs> Happy accident. Um, I'm delighted to see Dalsum at this level of, of competition. And shout out to Kimberly, of course, who, Absolutely. interestingly, the last time that we saw Shine in TNS as well, which was just on Wednesday, ran through Kim ran Kimberly the whole way, picked Chun once at the very end, tried it out, it didn't work out, went back to Kimberly, went out on the shield on Kimberly. Yeah, it is a character that people were really not sure with at the start of Street Fighter Six because of the nerfs coming out of the beta, but is really starting to find their own here in, in the meadow. Let's see, Uriel, the glasses are off right now. Oh, yeah. Are we going to get him back on, though? Is this final form? Final form, Uriel. Nah, I see the glasses still hanging from the neck, so we, we might have a power-up still. I think he's actually saving. I think that's an install. Aren't they limiters? So, yeah, that's the question. Is the, Are the glasses an install or a limiter? No, no, no. They're the install, 100%. 100%. Remember, he had the other sunglasses on, and he switched sunglasses, and he got the dub. So I think I think the sunglasses switch is definitely waiting for him. Right. Here we go, time to jump right into it. All right, moving in. Dude. Yeah, yeah it's so good. <laughs> it's so cheesy and so corny, but I love you, Capcom. It was a beautiful addition to the game. And hearing that at EVO, by the way, was so crazy. I love like the to break red, but I'd rather yeah. break records. It's so bad. It's so bad, but it loops around to awesome. It's just like Invincible all over again. Anyways, let's get into this set. Two bars from the drive stocks already burned from Uriel, trying to get things started early. Gamma does not bite. And now we find ourselves at a stock lead for JP, which can translate into a life lead pretty quick. And here you go, trying to parry all this stuff that's coming in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the immediate OD amnesia. Wow. That honestly but... feels really bad. <laughs> if you if you close the distance, oh my god. 
Oh, he's gonna convert this? No, we do not get a conversion. <laughs> look, look, look. I'm sorry, y'all. It's got no business working against Thrust. <laughs> I know. It is wild. It is very, very wild. It wakes up with the level one super. That's something that we saw a lot from Gamma in the last time that they were on the screen. They were money with the wake up level one supers in a big pressure situation on Uriel. Closes up the first round. Nicely done. Amnesia has got to be one of the most gifted moves I've seen in fighting game history. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty blessed. It is very very bizarre. It's That's how he dodged taxes, bro. <laughs> he just OD Amnesia. Did. That that move definitely was a paperwork mishap somewhere. That was a loophole in the bureaucracy if I've ever seen one. Back yep. in the neutral, and we are at a lead for JP again. Hold on, not oh, this time, yeah. player. Yeah, flying straight on over it, gonna get the toss there. Back dash is just to create a little bit of space to stay out of that throw range. Good check on the neutral jump. We absolutely can have those if we're JP. Ariel keeping the distance pretty close, though. Oh, but here we go. Sent back to full screen once again. Observe. Yeah, observe these hands. Mm -hmm. The short confirms for Shodo's essential. You have to have those combos into the short. You can well done from Ariel keeping things alive. Brother, he has a critical art. You know he'd want to get it engaged if he could. Might not need it. Nice, oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Baits it oh, on so out. But it... If he did wake up super, he was dead. Bro, he just DP'd on his wake up. <laughs> Alpha. Who <laughs> that is? Alpha oh, that's Sigma, Earl. bro. Yes. Oh, my God. The, cr the dagger crouching medium kick. Green dashes right into the crouching medium kick. Confirm. Oh, we let JP jump out of the corner. That is a massive miss opportunity. Uh -oh. Beautiful counter DI. Yep, coming on through. Goes for the neutral jump there to get him into the air. Side swap combo as well. But actually, that was let, beautiful. Yeah, he that let him actually go straight into the knockdown so he could frame him with the standing light punch and immediately go into a run to time the meaty low. That was so sick. An awesome situation from Ariel. But on the other end of this, Gamma finds an advantage. Able to convert into the level three. So we don't have a life lead with the stock situation on drive. Looking really bad for Ariel. Look at this respect that they're showing in the neutral now. I don't want to commit too much here. Yep, dashes right on into the tip of that cane, and now you're back to square one. It feels bad. Mm -hmm. A couple of more of those situations at best for Uriel. Maybe one at all if we hold some of these projectiles in neutral, which we do. It's going to put it so close to burnout. Bro, wow. Whoa, letting the level two rip, but no, it's not invincible, no, it's not. KP. So no. he's going to get blown up. That is so unfortunate. Man, if we were buffering level one there, it's a total yeah. different scenario. But you're right, no invulnerability on the level two at all. You can literally just walk up and throw that thing. Unfortunate. Got my at a 1-0 lead now. Ken says, I'm angry. I'm mad. I used the wrong option. I'm coming back hot. Doesn't convert. But JP, back throw into the corner. Lucky that Ken gets to jump out again. And so blessed as well. Nice with the parry. This time, though, gets clipped by the standing heavy punch punish counter. Oh, brother. You want... I know this situation. You have JP so <laughs> close to the corner. You're hungry. You're bloodthirsty. You want to get something going on him. And he just peppers you in all the right angles on that approach. Well done from Gama, who gets away with yeah. murder, jumping out of the corner, man. Well, he's set right back in there with the back throw. Ooh. Nice. Immediately goes right up in for the light DP. Oh, oh no. That sucks, man. If you're going to cash in on this, ooh-wee. Level two, juggle on deck. Yeah, they got these. That Whoa. got weird. That got weird. A trade will do it. That's a round lead yeah. for Gamma. It's about like where Ken was positioned on the screen. It just made it a little weird, so he ended up teleporting forward into him. Get the plus one situation to go for it, bro. The OD just gets you out. Jumps right up. He's getting out of the corner for free. Not even doing anything special. He just jumps right over. Yeah, and up forward. And uh, Uriel really has no answer. Yes. I mean, he's doing natural things in office. He's going for tick throws, etc. And then in a completely neutral situation, an opponent jumps over your head. It's not the biggest deal. But in the corner, you lose all that effort. So it is is—it is really becoming super critical. Checks here Brother. while in burnout. No fear to try and just check. Yeah. Yeah. That one's playing really comfortably. Uriel has a chance here, though. We got him in the corner. The meaty DI lands. Are we going to do the level three combo? I think we should, man. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Struggle's good. Yeah, level three. It. Okay. I was about to say, there, there, there's an argument to be made about not doing the level three because you still have to go into the next round, and MJ is sitting at nearly three bars. Sure. Right? Agreed. 
but I think just closing it out. Is don't want to give him the opportunity. Yeah, he's so close to getting out of burnout. Exactly. You're right, because of the stun situation. So there's a lot of you know, a lot of things that could have gone wrong. I agree. If you're Uriel, just spend it, get that win. Oh, we let him get away with him. I saw that Hadouken coming out every single show. The players know what that was. They missed the sure you can. Great job from Gamma to punish. And constantly just drive <laughs> rushing on in. I like just going for the parry and not the drive rush to kind of bait something out, right? Bait mm -hmm. out a counter drive rush poke. And there we go. Drive impact straight through. Huge punish. Yes, very well done. Moving that character towards the corner. Ooh, the evil winner. The drive rush into the jab. Meaty fireball is good. That is an essential part of extinguishing the wake up offense from JP. It beats both the OD Amnesia and it beats the wake up level one super. Burial in a tough situation here. They do have the life lead. They do have the corner control, but they're in burnout. Gamma goes into burnout themselves. Three meters on deck. Beautiful cross counter. Cross counter uppercut. Level two's oh. on screen. Yeah, sends it out. I mean, that's such a smart thing to do when your opponent is in burnout, right? Yes. But still, the jump oh, forward, if you get around it, bro, he's no. trying to go for this step kick like crazy. And there it is, the big right hand with the standing heavy punch, tying things up 1-1. Yeah, that got really awkward. A big anti-air was missed. That would have taken the game, but it doesn't matter. We get the green dash into the teeth smasher. Well done, game of Posey. Poking out of that situation. Very rare that you actually find some success there. This little short jab combo on the other side. Plus one is good for Uriel. Peppering in with Jinrai now. Nice conversion. Moving JP into the corner and a big neutral jump on it. It's gonna set things up for the Ken offense. Yeah, meaty fireball there too, but here comes the OD Amnesia into the level so one. Cheap. But he parries all of it and gets the throw punish, putting him into burnout. Yeah, but Uriel missed a green dash there, so we just had the standing with Harry. Beautifully done with the block string DI. That's gonna give us the stun and the round lead and wow. the meter lead. Yeah, just the amount of advantage right now that Uriel has really starting to get more comfortable as the set goes on. But there's the drive impact on the very first Dragon Lash kick attempt this round. Oh, that was a max max that range, bro. I do believe that there's a bit of a weirdness in Street Fighter 6 when you're crouching and you're standing oh, in your hurt box. That was a punish parry. counter! That was a perfect parry on the Pierce immediately into a punish counter. High Beautiful level Street Fighter 6. High level Street Fighter 6. Beautiful stuff. Peppering in the corner. We let him get away. We stall too long for the anti-air uppercut. Now JP's going to stack in some damage. That was a, such a great call out from Uriel, though. These players are swinging, man. Right there into the level three. Oh, brother. OK. This is down to everything here. In this second round, he just finds a crouching medium kick poach. You have to know that the kin is going to go to that poke in that situation. Emma was not ready. Now Uriel with a 2-1 lead here. Well done. Yeah, trying to move on into that loser's finals. He's hungry that's for possible. it. Interesting that Uriel keeps going for that. I'm not sure if that's an accident or not. Oh. Ray. He said go time when the amnesia was active. Yo, Uriel is, is full-blown foot on the gas right now. He is not stopping. He's got no fear, bro. He's about to turn on the nitros. He doesn't hold up forward out of the corner again, though. Don't allow JP to get all this work started. A little bit of hesitation in the button presses from, from Gamma here. Good anti-air though. Why is crouching jab into standing medium punch a, a frame trap for Ken? That is so wild. Because it's just Ken things, bro. He's Baby. privileged. Boy, is it. Green dash into the throw. Loop situation is engaged. Yes, Look, JP can be feeling the heat. You can take the privilege out of the man, but you can't take the man out of the privilege, all right? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's a round lead and set point for Earl at this point. What a competitor. Looking like he's responded completely in this top tier matchup. Mm, the pull up Dragon Lash. I love it when players do that. There we go. Driver right on in into the neutral jump. Gonna get a nice punish here. Oh, that was a purposeful drop to set up for the throw attempt. That's cute. The loop situation was engaged. Go time. <laughs> it's go time, bro. He's not, he's not afraid at all. I'm getting that tatted. Need a go time caddy. Ooh, nice cross cut. Uppercut is solid. That puts Gamma at what, 40% at best? Another crouching medium kick confirmed would absolutely do this. You know Uriel's ready to rip on that level three combo. You gotta play perfect neutral if you're Gamma at this point. Uriel's close to burnout. We could absolutely make this happen. For sure, but nice, a perfect parry. Gonna capitalize in a big way here. Put him in the corner, not enough to kill. Off of that parry scaling. The well done Uriel who does not spin. Trying to just play for position. What Whoa, is that? No what way that was on purpose. The world. There's no shot. 
Oh, that's rough. What in the world was he going for there? Uh, yeah, Gamma thought we were playing Street Fighter 2 for a second. Thought we could just let one rip. He just does it again. I mean, Earl, at that point, man, Earl, just go ahead, bro. Full send. He's Full like, force. He's like, am I really punishing just a raw Tatsu here? What game am I playing? This is insane. Tying the rounds up here in game four. Now Gamma with all dashes up and just gets the throw. That's how you know Gamma's playing ultimate respect right now. I mean, absolutely. I mean, Uriel is still sitting. At set point, though, just needs to find that right confirm. He has three bars on deck. This time, he gets it just up. They're up boarding on each other 100% in each other's strings. They're just jumping out of the corner. Nobody cares. Nobody's expecting anything. How's this? That's going to convert. Oh, surprised we didn't get the cancel there into the level three, unfortunately. That would have given us a lot of time to build back that drive gauge as well. That's true. That might come back to haunt them. Back in neutral again. Uriel feels the pressure to advance. Why? We're going to go for a, such a risky option in DI there. I know that Uriel's in burnout, but you have to establish that they're not going to jump there. He's barely alive. And not in burnout yet either, but there we go. Gets caught trying to jump out of the fireball, and Uriel is going to be able to take it. Didn't even have to put the glasses on. We had a whole other form of Uriel waiting in the depths when the glasses could have come on. Didn't need it. Going to save that for losers' finals. He's going to be going up against Liquid O. Dalsum versus Ken. Dalsum. Yeah. Poor Dalsum. It is tough, man. It, it, but you know that we, when you're we, signing up with the character. Can we get some prayers up in the chat for our Dalsum? Yeah. Our Dalsum brother here. We'll get some yoga yoga prayers. Some yoga prayers. It's, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy, but you know what you're getting into when you play. You're a specialist with sure. a character like Dalsum. So you gotta, you got to believe that they're prepared with something. Some sort of matchup knowledge with the Shotos that you're going to have to be able to break into right now. To present a wall against the Ken offense. We saw at least that they were really clutch against Kimberly. Yeah. And Kimberly is an offense engine completely of her own. And the truth is, you're not going to make it to losers' finals unless you've gone through an army of tens. Or so, a Luke. Yeah. It's like you've beaten Shotos. Exactly. You, you know how to beat Shotos. So now we have to prove it. We're on the big stage. Top three situation. You know you want that run back against Kimberly because it came so close. Went down to the last round in game five of the winner's side of Grand, uh, of winner's finals. Excuse me. Yes. Losers' finals now. Liquido going to be taking the Dalsum up against Uriel's Ken, and the winner gets the opportunity to play against Lugabo's Kimberly in Grand Finals. Kimberly sitting in Grand Finals here. Lugabo as well, which, I mean, if, if chat's not lying, which they always tell they the truth, mean, right? They are mean, right, yeah. They're, they're not, no, totally not. They're, they're... He's, he's very young. Yes, I can tell that. <laughs> I don't know if he's... I've seen, what, 14, 15, 16 coming <laughs> in the chat. Oh, my God. Okay, so he is 14 years old, and he's sitting in Grand Finals. That's incredible. And he got pops. You got Pops in the spectator seat? That's crazy. Shout out to parents out there supporting That's your kiddos. Awesome. I love to see it. Um, I remember the first time I got beat by someone in a tournament when their dad was there. Shout out to Splash <laughs> from the Lexington scene out in Kentucky who blew up and was great in Street Fighter, great in NRS game, played a whole lot of different games. So I know that feeling. I just love to see the next generation of fighting game players blooming, right? Oh, it's and sick. Incredibly well. Absolutely, it's sick. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to see. And, uh, you know, Kimberly, Young Blood. Those reactions are on, on deck, you know, it's the stuff that you need for that character. Cutthroat decision making. You said those are young man decisions. We yes, weren't lying. I was not lying, yes. All right, here we go. Losers finals. It's going to be Ken versus Dalsim. Is Liquid O going to be able to stave off the relentless offense from Uriel's Ken? Dalsim's got that home field advantage, you know what I'm saying? That's true. This stays locked, by the way. Oh, Evo Winner checks him in the second situation. Not able to get too much out of it. Nice and here. Even better throw tech from Uriel. We are full blown even. And it really is just buttons back and forth between these two, right? Trading advantages here. Okay, this, is a, this, this could be a lot more frantic than the Dawson vs. JP, where they're really playing at specific ranges. Ooh. Oh, ducking right the standing roundhouse. And there really? it is. Perfect parry to finally find your in. Hitting perfect parries on Dawson is so crazy to me. I feel like his blood is coming out in such weird timing. And they're just designed to be so strange. So well done from Uriel to get that, that indecision sewing in early. In the yep. loop situation, that's a round one lead for Uriel to start game one. Get the bowl out. We got the loops. Yes, sir. Back in the neutral. Oh, Green Dash just tries to close the distance and force it. Look who was ready. Challenges. A couple of stalks drying off the drive meter from Uriel early. And you see that Uriel is constantly trying to go for these parries as well. He wants that perfect parry because the perfect parry is your guaranteed in against Dalton. You're right. 
But, I mean, Liquid's doing a good job. He's putting in a lot of damage on the stocks. Ariel finds the opportunity to build it back. The reversal comes in at a clutch time. We saw that previously from Liquid O. Oh, we missed Annie here. Ariel not able to find the first hit. The follow-up confirmed is good. Corner juggle making things dangerous from Liquid O. With also against the ropes here. Yeah, and there it is. Perfect parry, but too far away for the standing heavy punch to actually connect. So Uriel not going to get the huge punish that he was expecting there. Oh, that was utilizing weird. Dragon Lash, I believe, not to go for a pickup, but to stay keeping him up against the wall. Yeah, that's a crazy juggle situation. Uriel is in burnout, but how is Liquid O going to make something of this? Nice turn, nice turn, uh, turn about there with the teleport. Okay, I love that throw, by the way. It's just hilarious animation. Both of his throws are so good. Yeah, when he does the geef, it's outrageous. Oh, when he just bonks you, boom, yeah. boom. That's a classic. Oh, okay. Nice reversal on the projectile. Ken fires back with the OD Hadouken and takes the first game. Nice start from Uriel here. All right, wow, again, ducking underneath the standing heavy kick. Mm -hmm. Green dash. On in, tries to get that throw. It is going to be broken, though. Patience from Muriel, actually really trying to measure up when his opportunity to get in is. That's so weird, I can't believe that missed. Yeah, the punish with yeah. the, the jumping heavy punch. Muriel low on drive stocks again, just getting so much mileage out of that parry though. I feel like as, as, as if Uriel is intently dipping low on the drive meter, knowing that they can get away with parrying a lot in these situations and building it back. So it's paying off in the investment game. And then another big confirm in the corner here. Oh, Liquido, life is draining quickly. Oh, man. This could be the end. One more sequence could yeah. do it. The shimmy. There it is again with the throw loops just whiffing that standing light punch. Yeah, another round lead for Uriel here. It's not been like a steamroll by any means, but definitely. Dude, look at it. He's like, hey, look, give me that. Give me that. Look at Blue Dark and all that. <laughs> It's just been consistent. That's mm -hmm. the main thing, right? Yes. It's just been consistent pressure over and over. Once he gets that in, yes. uh, Liquid just can't get him out. Very well said. Nice challenge from Liquid there, though. We're putting some offense together. We dropped the confirm on the other end, so that's unfortunate. Plus frames coming in from Ken. Close the distance immediately. Now we're peppering in the Jinrai offense. Neutral jump, punish counter. Big combo coming in here on Dawson. All right, goes for the level two reversal. Parries it. Yeah, but that's going to keep him safe. Yes. And wow, what a confirm really? there. Checks him in the air and goes straight into level three. And this is the thing that we've been seeing so far, is the moment that Liquid gets put into the corner, it's over. This sucks, man. I mean, this is just the Dalsam way. Nice throw tech. We're surviving. But then the currency medium kick a dagger to the heart. Youch. 2-0 lead for Uriel just like that, playing hot. Because Liquid starts off strong, doing a good job just keeping him poked out. But you can't. There is no possible scenario where you're going to keep him out the entire game. It's impossible. Right? You're, you're right. But once he gets in, he carries you to the corner, and then that's it. It's just uh, game over. This sucks. The teeth smash your heavy punch again, man. You called it exactly right. Wait a minute. Hold on. We have a chance here. That's massively plus frames. Oh, but then we let Ken get out. It's so unfortunate. Get out of jail for free here. Just fly in the cuckoo's nest. Wait a minute. Big count punish counter. We're evening up the life bar a little bit. Jump light kick actually trades into juggle. Yoga. Ariel just got out of burnout. He's already getting close to be put in a burnout again. No fear at all, but here we go. Level one with the yoga fire. Still fighting. This has been such a clutch round from Liquid. We have to get this, and with the anti air drive rush confirmed. Well done. Liquid down 2 0. But he said, I ain't out yet. I ain't hear no bell. That was a great reach to the Crappy Fierce as well to start. Nice challenge with the drill. Okay, we're putting together sequences. This is 100% yeah. still possible. <laughs> Teleport on in for that low. Just trying to be very active. And whoa, goes for the safe version of the Dragon Lash, the one that prevents you from getting hit by the drive impact. The Evo winner, man, it is so strong. That drive rush jab is one of the strongest sequences you can start with in Street Fighter VI. Nice. We have perfect parry the Hadouken. Nice reversal. I think we had to do that there. We're so low on drive, oh, though. No. And now you're going to be put into burnout, too, up against the wall. You have to expect that Uriel is going to try and go for some kind of drive impact setup here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You combo into it, get string into it. You can even fake it, right? Just use that threat of the DI to seal the deal. Throw loop situation engaged, but we missed the drive rush. That's unfortunate from Uriel. Doesn't matter in the long run. We end up getting the round now. Uriel on set point here. The 2-0 lead.
tying the rounds up in game three. Liquid does have three bars here, but really, uh, when it comes to spending our super meter, we haven't gotten a chance to do a whole lot. It's been level two that's gotten parried, you know. It's just, this is so difficult for Dalton. It's not over yet. Nice bait, we get the punish counter on the parry again. We get a burnout on Ken here early. Wait a minute. Oh, great check after the plus frames. Any air Jinrai follow up. Oh, that's such a feels bad. Get the back throw. Okay, this is this is the best case scenario for Dalsum. Wow, and just checks with the crouching life punch, able to get a full confirm into it as one. You see him staying outside of that danger range. Perfect right. parry. Wow, bro. It left him standing too. That is enough, I believe, with the super follow up. Well done, Ariel. Takes a 3 0 over Liquid. Tough situation for Dawson, who did their absolute best, given the circumstances. Just a tough matchup to overcome. It is just, yeah, it, it is a devastatingly difficult matchup, especially with just how strong and how explosive Ken is in this game. Any touch from Ken, I mean, he's get he's got coast to coast confirms, you know? So even if you have him in the corner, you're not necessarily safe because if you mess up once, he's gonna put you into the other one. It sucks, man. It is really, really, really tough for Dawson, so. Hats off to Liquid getting this far in the tournament. Top three, that's nothing to sneeze at. This is an accomplishment in itself. And speaking of which, the winner's side of Grand Finals is going to be Lou Gabo on the Kimberly. So we're going to have a Kimberly versus Ken Grand Finals. This is going to be Kimberly, Ken, lit off. Okay. Yeah, it could be full offense, high octane, a lot of momentum, a lot of swings, a lot of snowballing. Is Earl going to be able to get that reset? Well, we are going to find out real soon, but we are about to throw it to a little short break here before we jump into that grand final. So make sure that none of you go anywhere because there's going to be more Street Fighter Six action after this. It's hard to think that my first fighting game tournament was in 2010. Damn. That is a staggering long time ago. I was an 09 and came in on the Street Fighter Pool boat, of course, and been fascinated with the series ever since. And yeah, here we are. Homeboy yeah. sitting in winter side. Bro, we got, age 14. We got 2022 years. We do. And I love to have you. We have 2023 20, years. Yeah, 2023 years as well. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just so exciting to see. It's, it's an electric be very time. Exciting to see this Grand Finals as well. Of course, Uriel finding his way up to loser side Grand Finals here with his Ken going up against Lugabo. Yes, and I got to be honest, uh, I'm not surprised to see Uriel in a top three situation because we get them every week in the Wednesday night tournament at TNS. And that is no joke of a bracket. Lugabo just opens up with a jump in combo. Roundhouse into the throw loop situation. Nice tech from Uriel. We needed that, but these are still looking pretty bad for Ken to start off. Yeah, I mean, look, just peppering with all of these different normals as well. Even the air to air gets. Well, he was in parry. Let go of parry and immediately hit it again. That was nuts. Yeah. Well done from Gabo shutting things down. We are barely 30 seconds into this game. It is a steamroll. First touch on Kimberly, the EVO Bro. winner. Nobody home checks on this follow-up situation. That's a one-round lead for Gabo. Thank you, Nerd Street FGC coming through for the raid. Y'all are just a time here for it. Grand Finals at Astral Finish Festival 2023. Just welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate the raid. Happy to have you here in Grand Finals. Ariel tries to check with the green dash jab offense. Nice throw tech. Ooh, no anti-air though. Get away with one. And just a spacing there with the standing medium kick. Unfortunately, wasn't able to get much out of it. Back to this neutral situation. Jumps to the other side oh. and gets blown up, trying to stick out a limb there against that Dragon Lash. That is an aerial staple, is chaining normal into the, the Dragon Lash. They love the stand light kick into the Dragon Lash. All kinds of different ways they'll throw it at you. Just be very, very careful pressing buttons and strength. Kimberly with a chance here. Ariel doesn't care. <laughs> no, no, not at all. But you know what? We get to hold on to that critical art going into the next round, right? So, <laughs> he did not care whatsoever, dude. No harm, no foul. Both of them starting off in round number three here with three bars on pop. Yes, Ariel is fearless in burnout. Nicely done. Here's the three bar. Uh, go for three bars there. And the teeth crusher. Drive rush, heavy punch. Pushes Kimberly all the way into the corner. Go loop situation is engaged. Got to be really careful here because a big cash out combo with all those drive stocks on deck could lead into dangerous territory. Yep, straight into the level three, but it's not going to be enough to kill in this scenario still. It's going to put Uriel in such an advantageous situation, right? Knocked down in the corner, still swimming at full health, trying to cook up this perfect. Mm -hmm. Chapa spins, chooses to get the distance from the corner. Uriel checks at the perfect time and seals the first game with a perfect 
Nicely done. 1-0 lead. Now, remember, Uriel has to get the reset here. So if we're going to want to win this tournament, it's a six-game spread. That's tough to do. Kimberly could turn it on at any moment and start running away with some games. But hey, I mean, that's a good start, right? Closing yes. out game number one with a perfect there. Being very patient to try and punish that slide attempt, too. Mm, yeah, the, uh, the drive rush game from Uriel is looking solid. Gabo had that perfect parry in the first game, the first round. But so far, nobody home since then has been all Ken offense. The throw loop situation engaged once more. Punish counter Macho Man, we needed that. I mean, again, while Lugobo could definitely cook, and we're going to see him cook, uh, the problem is it's a similar thing to that we saw with Sim. It's being put into the corner with no reversal. That's true. Right? That is what is so devastating about Ken. He has the best corner carry in the entire game and some of the best corner pressure on top of that in the entire game that you have to deal with. So he gets two for two. And when you don't have a meter, like, you don't have an OD reversal, you just have to hold that. Yeah, yeah hold that is a great way to put it. Already at 30% or so life lead for Uriel as we just get a drive rush, punish counter throw. Things are going from bad to worse for Kimberly. Ooh, the yeah. shimmy. Ooh, get caught reaching, man. Uriel with the level three on deck. You know we're gonna spend it. That is a 2-0 lead just like that. Again, with a perfect two. Two perfects, two Ouch. games, two perfects to close them out. Uriel is trying to speed run this grand finals into the reset. That's what you want to do. That's not, that's, you do not want to go. 10 games in a set that is so exhausting to try to win two sets if all of them go to 3 2. So well done, Uriel, getting off to a sprint here and opening up game three with the first blood of the combo. Man, Lugabo is just getting kind of. Get kind of pieced apart, young man. We yeah. gotta slow things down. I, exactly. I think I think if this does go to a reset, Lugabo really should take the time to go back to uh, character select, right? Take a little bit of a breather, think about what's going wrong. But, you know, Lugabo doesn't even want it to get to that point here. Here's the coast to coast confer. Putting Ken now Ooh. into the corner to give him a taste of his own medicine. Yeah, another good way to slow things down is to bash your opponent's skull in. So I like the situation that we had going there from Kimberly. <laughs> Ariel survives though. Yeah, right. Earl survives though and comes out still with the lead. So, you know, Kimberly able to put a few things together. Oh, just gets caught, uncomfortable space in neutral. Commits and Uriel finds to confirm one bar will do it. Reset point. I believe that is five rounds straight. Yeah, that is pretty rough, pretty rough. And a one bar left still for Ken. So it's not like we even had to spin everything. Nice job from Lou getting things started early. So much respect oh, in the neutral. One step forward into a throw, and now we're caught into these throw loops as well. Tries to go for the shimmy there with the standing heavy punch and gets the cross cut DP instead. Nice meaty fireball. Checking the wake up. If it was a level one, that would have lost. EI comes out. That's the first DI of the set, I believe. Meaty slides into the throw. So we, we get the back throw at least. We can't really set something up here. We have to push Ken into the corner. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Just bad spacing there on Uriel's part. Bates out the drive reversal. How do you? That was crazy. How do you even predict the drive reversals coming out there? Or I mean, I guess you're creating out any reversal, right? ESDP, yeah. anything like that. But that was incredible. What a call out. Beautiful response from Gabo there. Nicely done. We get the level three install on deck. So we got the speed bonus. We can make some things happen here. We're down in a really, really bad way, but we are absolutely not out. He's so good at that. The stand like it the Dragon Lash is so frustrating. Okay, here we go. We fight back with the low confirmed this time. Well done. He can He just doesn't care, man. Checks back in the same range with the crouching meaty kick of his own. Pushes Kimberly all the way in the corner. Peppering in the gen rise. Nice jumping cross-up situation. Goes ahead and sets up the spray can. Nice parry there, though, from Euro, but it's still going to get caught. Lugabo putting himself into burnout to set up another pank in here. Wants to close things out right now. Oh, Macho Man confirmed. Can we spin this? No, so close. Throw will do it. Now we're on the board. Two to one. Kimberly really fights back. Ooh, all right. That's what we're seeing, right? When you get pushed up to the edge, that's when you get that Zenkai boost. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I absolutely agree. That was... You start getting into the zone, right? You start getting into the flow, feeling yourself a little bit. That's a big part of these matchups. What a challenge from Ken to just catch the teleport right at the start. Oh, man, I wouldn't be surprised if I was a little tilted there if, if I'm Kimberly. Yeah, I mean, that's having half your health gone just in a flash. 86 seconds left on the clock. But here we go, just trying to keep that pressure up. Gets the throw on the parry attempt for the punish counter. Nice, punch, nice uh, perfect parry. Any air back throws again. Playing for position. Oh, empty jump this time. Ken says, shame on me for the first one. 
jam on you the second time. Going to take that all the way into a round lead once again at reset point. And you saw earlier, he's been consistently conditioning with the throw loops. Now he's not even going for the throws, right? After he gets the throw, he's going for the light punch, straight into the close medium punch. Yeah, Uriel's adjustments have been fantastic. Nice jump in from Lou. We saw one of those in the first round of game one. We thought it was going to be a press. That said, what a challenge in that situation. So much bravery from Ariel to press there. Wait Again, a minute. With the, going for the EXDP this time. Are we on level three? I mean, we could. I get it. It's definitely... Mm, yeah, I also understand the, the idea to hold on to the meter here. Because Ken is in burnout, we have to be so careful, though. Oh, no. That's so plus. Yeah, it's hella plus right now. I mean, you are going to recover first. Oh, brother. Oh, wake up super. There we go. That's unfortunate. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's okay. One, one it's okay. He was moment. dead anyway. He was dead anyway. Uh, <laughs> For more moment. That That is unfortunate that you had to spend that bar, right? Because you definitely wanted to go into this next round with level three on deck. But it's okay. You still have two bars. Yeah, you build meter so fast in this game. You can absolutely get to a level three and just one out. 100%. Definitely will be done. Ariel opening up with offense early. Okay, we're not going to wait for level three. We're actually just going to spend again. I mean, I like that decision because Ariel has been committing to the generalized sequences. So, well done. Fights out. Gets more breathing room. We're having such a difficult challenging, difficulty challenging the heavy dragon lash, though. That has just been money for Ariel. All right, just goes for the wake up super this time, but now getting a little too greedy with it, right? It's already worked out two times for reversal super. You can't expect it to just work a third like that. <laughs> And here we go, reset has <laughs> happened. Time for another first to three here. Ooh wee, I, uh, Gabo looks a little bit lost there. It's okay, brother, take a breather, take a breather. Let's go to the character select. I like what you said that earlier. And he did that in Winter Sight. We actually saw. There we go. Yeah, okay, Exactly good. what he's doing. You have to go back, just take a breather, think about what went wrong, all right? I mean, you're young. Maybe not used to this kind of situation with the whole crowd behind you, right? The, the, the roar of the crowd, it can definitely throw you oh, off your Oh, it's tilting. Game. It is absolutely tilting. Yes, 100%. Good. Take all the time you need. Look at him. Focusing. Trying to get back into the zone. Oh, I mean, we saw that life in the last couple of games. The, exactly. The potential is 100% there. How do we shut down the Dragon Lash? Because we are stealing so many turns. And not only are we stealing turns, but because we're hitting buttons at an uncomfortable time, we're getting hit. So we're conceding so much to Ken. Nice back throw. We really needed that. Well, here we go. Yes, right on in. And that breather is already working perfectly here. Yes, we're playing at a very, very high pace. Go for the max distance slide. Nobody home, so Uriel does get a little bit of a confirm there. Oh, just got to be careful with some of these carries that you're throwing out, right? Ouch. I understand the reasoning you want to go for them, trying to get those perfect carries to turn things around, but you have recovery. Yes. Well, he goes for the OD, and actually, Uriel tries the green dash there. Nobody home. We convert with the level one. That should be enough. Yeah, there it is. All right, closing out the first round here. That was a calculated round. I like that spin. That's going to be something that we see for sure in the future of Street Fighter 6. A lot more level one combos as people get comfortable with that scaling. Earl just opens up by spending four drive stocks right off the top. Tries to press immediately and take the issue to Lugabo. We're doing a better job of slowing things down here. Nice. Meaty DI. Yeah, just letting it rip there. Squeezing out some damage there with the Uzuna drop. Ooh, a little bit of front and back again. Ariel doesn't bite, not in a big way. Nice with the parry. Gets the jump for another cross-up. Consistently, he's been landing those cross-ups here out of the corner. Ooh, and we parry, we hold the parry all the way through. That's something that we got to dial in on if we're Lou. We've seen Ariel commit to holding the parry a few oh! times. Beautifully done. We commit all the way through the Gen Rai into the level three. That's going to break the DI. All right, spend the EX Fireball. Dude, bro, he's just drive rushing in. Solid defense from Lou in the first couple of situations. One more here could do it, though, from Uriel. We do have enough life for a DI, Whoa. so we get it. Critical art. Yes, he's you dead. Have to spend it. He's dead. That's a 1-0 lead for Lou now in the first game of the reset in Grand Finals. Bro, I'm stressed. Yeah, this is nuts. This is, this is the pace that we expected, of course, and we saw in the first set of grand finals but i say i think the difference maker for sure has been that lou has been able to get started if lou can get started it does become a little problematic again nice anti-air perfect parry 
But that back throw is going to put so much distance. Kimberly towards the corner. We just steal one with the raw Dragon Lash in neutral. Yeah, and you see the, 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 that Ken is starting to go for a lot more throws because Lugambo really is just doing a ton of parries. Mm -hmm. I love seeing uh, Kimberly players using that, that target combo, the back throw target combo. They're playing for position. Uriel got a side switch combo of himself. We missed the anti-air Shoryuken. If there's been any weak point in Uriel, it's been at some point we do miss that Shoryuken a little bit. That DI oh. is not going to be good enough, my friend. Yeah, that was the light Dragon Lash kick, I believe, right? To make sure that you can land in time. It goes for the behind the back. Tatsu Brother. styling. Wait a minute. Is it possible? Oh, it's possible. We have the corner. We missed the reversal. Things are getting crazy. Oh, but there it is. Crouching medium kick. Oh, reliable. <laughs> I want to win. That behind present. the back Tatsu, though, that's, that's, a, that's a smoking sexy style. It is cool. Let me tell you. It's beautiful. It's, it's actually a little bit difficult to set up as well, so well done from Uriel. Low on drive stocks to start off the second round of game two. Is Lou going to be able to find a way to, to cash in on this? Ken already kind of getting back into it. Now with the drive lead, Lou just kind of had to do empty drive rushes a couple times, but nothing came out of it. Oof. Nice check. Get the target combo again. So the back throw is good. Loop situation's engaged. Yep, now you can start your own throw loops here. There we go. Just walk up throw. Do it again. Why not? Yeah. Ooh. That was sharp. Defense level three. Yep, get that install on deck. So we're not quite dead. Uriel's going to have another follow-up situation. we got to be wary of the potential for an OD reversal uppercut. We do give it respect. All right, puts ourselves into burnout. And yep, no DI to answer back. and wasn't able to cancel into critical R, which would have been a little scary. Yeah, that would have been scary. <laughs> I thought I was going to see it again. That would have been scary. Nice drive rush overhead. That's a party starter. With the install engaged as well, things are looking great for Lou to start off. The third round, but a crucial back throw from Uriel there. Ken steezes the control. They're just jumping out on each other at this point. And here we go in the corner. Nice gets the throw tech, but you have to figure out a way to escape from this situation. Mm, nice Ooh. check. Stay medium kick. Such a blessing to have in Street Fighter 6. The cancel really paying attention again. Ooh, good check there. Yeah, that anti-air was actually kind of crazy. We've been seeing time and time again that he's been going for these dry brushes in and then messing up the anti-air, but finally found the right spacing for it. Nice DI, nobody home. And there's the burnout here on both players' side. Gets the light confirm in to the level three. We're one apiece here in this grand finals. I mentioned it earlier that it's crucial in the Shoto gameplay. You have to be able to convert those jabs into the uppercut combos, cancels into the level three. I'm, am I remembering suddenly that this is a rematch of the winner side? Hey, let me, you know what, I can double check the bracket. Did Lou actually put Uriel? Because I seem to remember a Kimberly OD yes, sliding Lou, under Hadouken. Lou beat Uriel 3-2. Mamma mia, so it was a 3-2 win for Kimberly. The first game of top eight. So mm -hmm. all the way at the start. Yeah. A nice culmination. Ooh, teeth not in the back of the throw. That's a big confirm. Kimberly feeling all this pressure. The overhead was good. Doesn't matter. We get the throw anyways. Throw loop situation engaged. Nice tech. We needed that tech. Checks the cross of attempt this time with the standing light punch, and it works out. But there we go. DI against him in the corner. This is possible. This is possible. Oh, yeah. Big possible. We're going to get a setup on the follow up of this. Oh, we go into the DI. We're trying to milk that bar. So close to getting the burnout situation on Uriel. The parries, but watch out, yeah, for the throw. Bro is fearless. Bro is fearless. Dash, forward, throw. Are you serious? I mean, he's constantly going for throw after Lou parries something. True. Nice confirm here from Lou. We get the jump in combo again. Moving Ken all the way in the corner. Follow up over the over the overhead, too. They're just holding up forward, though, man. They're getting away with it. <laughs> there you go. He can't keep getting away with it. They're both doing it. Nice DI, I got to say. The, the DI game from Lou here has been really strong. Yeah, he really is just getting a lot of them for free, right? There have been some huge punishes here, but wow, speaking of punishes, Lou putting the pain to Uriel, tying the rounds up one apiece. And that was a beautiful sequence to close it out. Well done from Lou. Kimberly looking strong. We've definitely shored up a lot of holes. We have had some of the adaptations in this matchup. It's not as dominant as it was looking in the first set of Grand Finals. 
Ooh, Ariel tries to sneak one there. Didn't get a confirm. Instead, try to reset into a throw. They air any air confirm though. Ariel also just playing really solid. I mean, look at this too. Both of them just sitting on three bars. Is Ariel gonna spend it here? Yeah, this sucks. I think it's a, a good decision because you have to get some drive stocks back, right? You're gonna get another chance at a drive rush combo if you want it. Or drive rush pressure, excuse me. Oh, just walks up and trades. <gasps> Throws the drive impact down, but it still isn't enough to kill. Wakes up with the level three. Wait a minute. Critical art comes in at a crucial time. There's gonna be a little bit of drive left from Uriel. So we have to respect the OD reversal. No, we push him into burnout. Oh, and what a challenge there with a crouching light punch. Are you kidding so me? So risky. So risky, especially in burnout. Oh, wee, that is a big statement from Uriel to go up on a 2 1 lead here now after already winning the reset and losing actually to Lou in the winner side of top eight to start this segment. And you see Lou taking his sweet time here. Goes back to character select. That's yes. right. That's right. Do whatever you need to do. Take a deep breath. Take a drink, a little gamer sip. Oh, Yoro hasn't even put the class. No, that's right. There's still a final form left if we need it. <laughs> if we need it. All right, both of them taking some sips, though, staying hydrated. Here we go, jumping right back into it. All right, here we go. Okay. 14 years old. That is incredible. That, is, that cannot be understated. That is, that is a massive feat for a player to be this competent at 14 years of age. I, I mean, in so many different aspects of the game. Such, such a good understanding of mm -hmm. the flow of the game, too, and of his character. But there's a nice backdash on the throw attempt into a punish here by Uriel. Really? Wake up level one when you've had enough. I like it. Showing some fire here in game four. Another bread and butter opening things up for Kimberly. Yeah, spends a level one because you need to close it out. You put yourself in burnout. Cannot give Uriel an opportunity to bring that back. I get decision. We spent two meters in that round. Once on defense, the second on offense. Pays off massively. We have a round lead here. We load a can as well. We try to get the Macho Man. Uriel is ready. All done with the uppercut. Back dash. Hey, Earl got away with one on the other side. Now Lou gets one. Drive rush meaty. Opening up the damage possibilities. The can is engaged. Punish counter on the parry. That's an adjustment because Uriel has been consistently holding parry during, the, during those spray can sequences. Yeah, absolutely. There we go. Air to air situation. <laughs> He's constantly trying to confirm into that Tatsu. Not working out most of the time. But here we go. Combo oh straight into God. the level two. No way. Maximum Kimberly. There's just so much damage. He's still alive. One poke, one poke. Wow, and just like that, we're going to game five, a blistering game number four. That is the exact response that you need after Uriel starts wiggling some of the momentum out of the set. We saw Lou go to character select, slow things down, take a breather. This time, both players are feeling things out. They're, ch they're talking to each other. What's this? Oh, I like this. Uriel's got some tactics. Bro, he like, you might give him the side eye like that. Uriel's got some <laughs> tactics. Uh oh, I don't know what's going on. Why'd you look at him like that, yeah. bro? He said he looked at him like, what you mean? Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm interested to see what that situation was all about. Who knows? But this is it, guys. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Top 8 feed for Street Fighter 6. It has been a fantastic tournament. It all comes down to this. Final game. That was the actual finish festival, man. Holy smoke. <laughs> Great Top 8s here. Great Seriously. tournament. You see that parry too, Lou slowing things down. Huge punish there with the punish counter. Oh, Kimberly trying to disguise something there, starting to throw loop situation, and we go into the meaty DI setup. Well done. All that pressure coming in. Oh, whoa, we are going five head on these baits here. We're gonna combo into the level one, yes we do. He's still gonna be alive, and it's a burnout situation for Kimberly, so this is still very, very scary. Oh, and the cross up connects. Tournament point now for Lou. For the 14-year-old Kimberly main sensation, are they going to be able to take this tournament? Now, with the round lead in the final game of the Street Fighter Six bracket, we get out of the DI situation. Punish counter is good. Oh, we're trying to take this offense to the bank. Uriel fights back. Yeah, driver Sean in. Great two throw techs in a row there. It oh! gets the shimmy with the backdash. Has level two available, immediately spends it. Okay, okay. One more sequence could potentially do this. Oh! No! 
He has Shimmy again, but it's still He's not on. enough to get the kill. He has to find one more throw. <gasps> What attack from Mario? We land, we get the empty throw, or the empty low. Excuse me, nobody home. The poke is gonna take it, and the room just ex explodes. The 14 year old Kimberly Maine with his dad in the crib. That's amazing. That's Bro, an amazing what story. What a story. What a story here. 14 years old, <sighs> dominating this tournament, taking down players that we know are phenomenal. Yes. We know are world class. Yes. Listen, man. I'm going to be honest, if Uriel wins this tournament, I'm still happy. I'm so happy for Uriel, fantastic competitor, someone that we show, we saw show up in Just Frame earlier this year as well, and someone we see in week to week in the Wednesday Night TNS tournament, which is just a stacked bracket to play in. But you're talking 14 years That's old, a future. getting a big W like that over some top tier talents with Kimberly. That yeah. is amazing. Absolutely phenomenal. Someone put this kid on Ken, all right? And he'll go to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never know, man. A lot of players start this way, though. This is this is formative, right? You're, you're really developing your style. You're getting comfort zones and things like that. He was in such a dangerous situation so many times and was able to rally back and through something like going back to character slate, mm -hmm. taking a breather, not getting frustrated, not mashing it out. It shows maturity yes. already at this stage, right? The maturity to know that, okay, I'm getting a little overwhelmed. Let me go back to character select and calm my nerves, right? An incredible performance there, but also great job from Uriel getting second place, taking him to the limit there. Game five in the reset. What a top eight. <laughs> I'm inspired. <laughs> if you're not inspired by that, I don't know what to say. It is a phenomenal story and an end to a phenomenal show. Thank you, everybody who also joined us here, um, our spectators, our, our chatters, and our supporters, of course. I saw you, Knuckle Dude, dropping the sub in there a little Thank while you ago. For everyone who gave subs uh, came on in. It's been an absolutely phenomenal time. Look at and that, bro. Now we're just waiting for our uh, our award ceremony, Man, which this, will be coming up very shortly. This kid's going to remember this forever, bro. I know, right? That, How that sick is, uh, is that, dude? That is a great moment, bro. When I was 14, I sucked. <laughs> I sucked bad. I was still playing GTPO. I was playing Street Fighter 3. And I was playing Marvel 1. I had no idea what I was doing. I was trash. I was still playing on a keyboard. So congratulations, young blood man. That is awesome to see. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Look, look, if you if you're not sold on picking up Street Fighter 6 yet, oh, you might as well bro. pick it up now because it's so much fun. everyone's playing it from every single different fighting game scene. It has kind of brought everyone together, which is just a wonderful thing. I mean, that can be said for a lot of fighting games. It feels like every new fighting game that comes out, it gets the most sales that that series has ever gotten. We're in a special time. We in a, we're absolutely in a special time. I got to be honest. As soon as I get home tonight, I'm booting up. I'm I'm getting a little bit more points in the bank, trying to get that <laughs> Marisa to, to master, you know what I'm saying? I'm still like fighting the struggle. But uh, yeah, it's so cool to see the players, you know, putting in effort with characters that were kind of written off early in mm -hmm. season one of Street Fighter VI. Kimberly, a ton of people were ready to cast aside after the nerfs from the beta, weren't willing to make the adjustments and find the power level in this character. So big props to anybody who's still sticking it out with Kimberly and showing amazing results. Yeah, absolutely. Just a phenomenal tournament with over a hundred players, mind Jeez, you. This is over a hundred player bracket. <laughs> so just so you all are offline. aware, offline, yeah, offline, over one hundred player <laughs> bracket here at Astral Finish Festival 2023, and now it looks like we are getting our players up on stage for the awards ceremony. You know how many haters you just snuffed in one <laughs> in one sentence? We're talking offline, hundred stack. And we're we're playing Kimberly. Yeah. We beat Uriel on the Ken. There were JPs in the top eight. I mean Axel, who was in the grand finals of just What's just that? frame. Yeah. There's our boy. Yeah. I mean, come on. What are the haters about to say next about about him? You know, what what can you say? Like, no, it, you checked all the boxes. That is a major win, no matter how you look at it. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, vibe seems lit in this building. I'm I not know, gonna lie. Right, bro? I need to be there next year. No, facts. <laughs> Thanks. Never had to put the glasses on. I guess you were right. Bro, they you they were the, the limiter. You missed the juggling during KOF Top 8. That was what? crazy. There was a guy in the crowd. He was just sitting there on cam, and he just started juggling in between matches. <laughs> it was crazy. It was crazy. I used to know how to juggle. <laughs> just a great vibe all around here. Look at that Uriel. He's like, yeah, I got beat up. So what? <laughs> this is so what, player? So what? It's all That's the boy good times, off. though. Yeah, this was a journey, man. This is a real journey of a top eight. Yeah, shout out to the camera crew here with the candid shots. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I'm not going to lie. 
Here we go. Yep, we are getting our players lined up here, though, so we can get them their awards and we can get us all out of here. But it has been such a phenomenal time. From the KOF Top 8 that we had earlier on in the day to the Street Fighter 6 Top 8, we are very proud to be able to bring you the English stream here of Astral Finish 2023. Yeah, Chad, if you want to do me a little bit of a favor, just a small favor, show some love to our boy Jobber here, who hold, <laughs> held down two blocks. That's a long day's work. and did a fantastic job, as you always do, man. It hey, was a we pleasure. Never sleep. You know how it is. Hey, man. Yeah, but still, that's an effort, even among Tong efforts. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great job today. I'll see y'all tomorrow, too. Yeah, well done. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I'll be back for the Monday night action. Monday but night strive. Sincerely, man. It's not, it's not an easy thing to do, and you did a great job today. It was a great tournament, great broadcast. I hope we get to do more of these. In the, yeah, putting the medals out. I appreciate out. you, KP. <laughs> I appreciate you, bro. Here we go. Of course, in seventh place. Is it Bridget? I believe that's Rock DM there. And also in seventh place, Maximoff. Definitely a highlight, even though we only got to see Maximoff for the one game. The DJ went crazy. Yeah. And then in fifth place, Jazz Darrow. And uh, that's Axel, too. Yep, also coming in fifth place, Axel. Let's go, boys. And then in fourth place, we have MJ Gamma. Mm, the villain. The JP. <laughs> the JP player. And then coming in third, of course, putting in a great showing with Dalsum Liquid O. What a show from the Dalsum today. Yeah. Impressive. Made it to winner's side of uh, you know, yeah. winner's finals. Yeah. With Dalsum. And, of course, second place is Uriel. Shout to Uriel. That's a TNS favorite. That's a hometown hero as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> okay. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Heel turn. About to take down the awards presenter. And then in first place, your champion at 14 years old, Lugavo on Kimberly. I want to applaud. <laughs> and they're like, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Incredible. I just, yeah, very inspiring. What a yes. story. Couldn't have wrote it any better. Whoever's in charge of the script for this one, <laughs> perfect. Props to them. Yeah. Yeah, and did it under the gun, man. You know, nerves were killing it. It was shaky, the scaries, and all those things that you experience in a high-level environment. And to conquer that that sensation and get the dub. He got the Luke shirt, too. Got the dude got swagged <laughs> out, trophied <laughs> out, getting a sack of money. Is that Pops? Let's go, Pops. I hope that's his Pops. I see you, player. That's wholesome. Unbelievably wholesome, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, it's bright futures for him going forward, right? Seems to have a great community around him as well. You know, foster young talent like that, and it is only up from here. Seriously. Very, very well done from our champion, taking Kimberly to the bank. Not easily done. Yeah, Kimberly. Kimberly, too. In this top eight, out. we saw Kimberly, Manon, and Dawson. Yeah, really good character variety. Very fantastic character variety in this top eight. The only repeat character was JP, right? Once, yep. One JP and only one Ken as well. Yeah, pretty impressive. Yeah, but there we go. All of our top eight winners here. A lot of camaraderie, a lot of sportsmanship. I like to see that. It's always important to support your scene, right? I mean, that's one of the things that I, I, I love about the FGC in general is all the, the small local scenes that just lift each other up and support each other. And Mexico is definitely a big part of that. Oh, yeah. That's the homies. Love that crew. What's he holding up? I couldn't see it. <laughs> yeah, was it Ariel who had the, the Linus or the... The Charlie Brown hat. <laughs> I, yeah. I thought it was a Charlie Brown hat. I still couldn't tell what it was. <laughs> yeah, get more picks. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we got to get the photo. Celebrate. Live it up. Get the photo shoot in. If that was an Ibuki sticker, okay. Yo, what put Ibuki. That is, is, is that Bridget? Yeah, that's Bridget holding that. Ah, you know me, bro. I'm an <laughs> anime boomer, man. That's why you won the Monday night, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but thank you guys so much again for joining us here uh, for the, the top eight portion of... Uh, <laughs> A, a, a phenomenal tournament. I yeah. mean, honestly, for Street Fighter Six, I couldn't have asked for anything better um, out of Astral Finish. So thank you guys again so much for joining us here for the festival stream. We'll be catching you on the next one. Absolutely. And before we all go, I want to let you all know one last thing. Astral Finish, Street Fighter, forever. <laughs>